Stay Hello, hydrated. Hello, everyone. We're live. Are you That's ready why they don't for like back in the Long John Silver? Saturate fire days. Everybody will die of fun. And maybe death, but you know, that comes afterwards. Allergies suck. They sure do. Alright. Let's get into the mayhem. I have to. Let's see. It, I'm hearing more crackling. Oh. Oh. Oh, good. I thought my headphones were uh. busting. Cotton, there's a there's a neat little feature called push to talk, please. Sorry. Wait, what? What are you doing? Your mic is crackling. Super You're making hard. crunch noises. Crackle. Crackling. Oh god. <laughs> User Big settings. Crunch. Voice and video. Push to talk. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, we can't escape from crossing fate. Anyways. Uh. Okay, is it any better now? That's fine. Ish. It's not crackling at all now, so it's great. There we go, cool. We're, we're good, we're good. Wait. I really don't want to go ahead and have problems with my mic. Like I said, you could just do it. Uh, yeah. Con, are you yeah. sure you're using the right mic in Discord settings? Because this has uh, not been a problem. Uh, as I said, with push to talk, there's, you go to user settings, user settings, voice and video, and you can see it. You might want to just put on push to talk for this stream since the the sniffling. Uh. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> and that <laughs> it plays the yeah. opening every time you start it up. <laughs> we we'll also recommend using the delete key as the push to talk since that doesn't really do anything on Discord. Does it? How does that work if you're on your PC? What do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean? It's mm. this, you just press no. a key and then you talk. That's all. If how does it work on anything else but PC? For example, I press the left control key and my mic turns on. As long I as I'm holding the left control key. key. Oh, as I say, let me set my push to talk on because I've had it set the voice activity right now. Hmm. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, Apologies that... for the infinitesimal, the seemingly infinitesimal. Ah! <laughs> Apologies for the seemingly infinitesimal amount of fucking uh, issues we I had. I don't have on that on my thing. I don't know why this Wait. keeps happening. Wait, you don't have the push to talk setting? Wait, what? What? Uh, we don't have the Discord app. I don't downloaded. have that. Wait, okay, wait, 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 let me talk. You have the Please, Uno. Shelly, please, let me talk. <laughs> Shelly, right, not right now. So, uh, do uh, you see the little gear next to your, uh, like, mute and deafen button? Yeah? Okay, press that gear, and tell me what you see on the sidebar. Oh, hold up, I've got this. I, have I to, believe in I, you. I have to go fucking. I have to, it is really, really loud in, in, on my end, and I have to fucking go right a little you have bit. To fucking? And uh, the options menu has spoilers in, in the background. Oh. Okay. Because what? He assumes you already played the game? Like, why no, would it do that? Like the, uh, the promotional art for the Rondo of Witch and Reasoning. Uh, the Rondo of the Witch and Reasoning. Uh, has a bunch of characters that you would not have met yet in it. But yeah, did you find those settings, Kaneko? No, stop, stop going back to the opening! Uh, Kaneko? I'm just gonna load up the game, okay. Huh? Mm -hmm. Did you find the settings? My nose is on fire. I'm gonna thing in the world. Ugh. Ugh. But, uh, did you find those settings? I did, and it said I had to download the desktop app if I wanted to go ahead and make it work. Wait, Wait what, are you, what? what are you using? She's on the browser, then. You're on the browser? You're on the browser? You're on the browser? Yeah. You're, You're on, on the, the browser? browser? You're, You're on the browser? You're on browsers? I didn't even know that- What?! I recommend the desktop app. Yeah, I recommend using the desktop app. Huh. Yeah, you 
probably want to use the desktop. Uh, Wait, you've been using the browser all this time? We've established this. Well, yeah. Han, you realize that, like, the browser is nowhere near as efficient as a dedicated app. You can get so much better sound out of using the desktop app. So I should just download the app? Yeah, you probably. Should. If that's if your computer's not gonna explode if you do. I don't know if it will or not. Also, I'm, getting, I'm still getting, like, a weird crackling from your mic. Ah! Right, let's, yeah, let's, trying... let's not focus on that right now, Bone. All right. It sounds fine. Just download the app for the future, please. <laughs> the app's only only like 50 megabytes, so it shouldn't take too long. Oh my god. Meanwhile, we have fucking Kumasawa in the corner chastising us. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot we ended up stopping right where she was creeping in the corner. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. Are we are we in a functional state at the moment? Been... Oh, not again. Uh, well, not again. Uh, no. This hey, that's me. I waited too damn I'm long in... and too damn far to go ahead and mess with anybody else. I am not about to let my PC fuck me over. Els, yeah. Yeah. Okay, are you are you good to go? Is everyone good to go? I'm good. Alrighty then. I mean, I, 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 nobody else is saying anything. I can echo. Are you I'm okay? I'm good to go. Oh yeah. I'm warming up my granny voice. Yeah. Can I echo? Are you okay? Can con? Con? Can can I Is this what happens when you use the desktop when you don't use the desktop app? Con! I never downloaded the desktop app in the first place. Quite frankly, how long I'm have you been pissed. using Discord? Wait, are you downloading I've it I've been right using now? it this whole gosh darn time. Wait, what? Huh? Are, are you okay? Oh. I'm upset <sighs> because she was using the web browser this whole time. Mm. And yeah, that generally gives you much like uh, low quality sound. Uh, are you okay? And you know, still, it went through all of Higurashi and sounded great. Yeah. Oh my god. Can't wait to see what her mic sounds like with the desktop app. Oh, is she downloading the desktop app right now? I think she might be exploding. Not exploding. Well, I'm sorry you're pissed off. Like that does suck. God, why is this so loud? <laughs> oh, I mean, does it matter if I'm just using the web version instead of the app on my laptop? Do I even need the other one or the other? What? I mean, you don't. Just, you can't I mean, after you download it's the just app, better, but more no, no, features would be the inferior product available. Yes. Well, Khan's not even going to be talking for a bit, so I mean, if you want to get that settled, it's out, not that big a deal. Yeah, you could, you could like download it and then. They do it after this. Yeah. I mean, like she's not going to be talking for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say like we go on until we get to like a con. Okay. Role. In retrospect. Probably shouldn't have started the stream right away. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Oh, I don't want us to be known as the one who had a shit show in Minico stream. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I have a little bit of narration here, and then I, uh, Shelly's going to have to do his old woman voice for a couple minutes. From the shadows in the hallway, an old woman wearing an apron washed over them. It was Kumasawa. Hello? Hello. Oh fuck, the, why is the- why is the voices back on?! <laughs> God damn it! Jesus Hold on. Christ! Guys, can you hear me? Yes! We have yeah, fun okay. here. No, I cannot hear Wait. you, no. I, I can hear you. What the fuck happened? My mic just decided to stop working for a moment. I love the I was talking game. the entire oh, time. Him, oh, oh. And I love making them. <laughs> Wait, is that my line, or...? This is your line. This is Kumasawa okay. talking. 
Uh, you ready? Hmm? Oh, heartwarming. Heartrending. Shannon san. Hannon san. There's no reason for those to be picked on. But it cannot be denied that they are disliked by Gohoda san. Poor Gohoda san was taken in by the Ushiromiya head house. I heard he had worked for a fabulous hotel somewhere. I do think the manner of work he learned there was quite something. It's just that Ueda san is the newest servant here. He must have a lot of pride accumulated from his previous posts. Because Shannon san and Karen kun are his superiors here at the match. Yet our inexperienced have gone through much less life than he has. He picks on them every chance he gets. And although it's terrible, they are hated by Madame Natsushi too. Natsuhi or Natsuhi? Natsuhi, Natsuhi. Yeah. Natsuhi. Yeah. Yeah. Natsuhi yeah. and Goda. Go right, I'm going to do that line. Over. Mm -hmm. though, though it's terrible, they are hated by Madame Natsuhi too. Of course, in terms of period, Adam has been the family much longer. However, I must feel some sympathy for Madame as well in this case. The master is a truly cruel person. How could he not have realized that his trifling whim would pass such an inferiority complex upon Madame? Naturally, deep inside, even Madame fully under acknowledges there's no reason to treat them those two so harshly. However, the heart has reasons that reason does not. Ah, uh, how heart-rending. I cannot do anything but watch over them from the shadows. How was that? <laughs> Yeah, that was good. That was good. Oh, I liked it. Oh, hey, end of the chapter. <laughs> there's, there's a glass break. Is that it? That, that's the glass break thingy. Yeah. Uh. Gla All right, guys, stream up. <laughs> God, we were like two minutes away from being done. I forgot about that. Why is it tight? The four of us cousins were shooting the breeze over all kinds of topics. After all, there are both girls and guys here. Plus, you've got people over a wide spread of ages. Adult, high school, and elementary school. All each of us had to do was talk about ourselves, and it would be of great interest to, to the other three. I think I'm finally getting used to all this. I mean, Jessica and Maria. You both have grown more than I could have imagined over the past six years. So, to be honest, I was feeling a bit uncomfortable. But talking like this, I guess that on the inside, nothing's really changed since back then. The back up. Oh, as I say. John, you're needed. I mean, somebody can probably spell I think she might be downloading the app. Oh, oh yeah. god. Doing the stuff still. You good, Con? Orange, uh, do your best, Jessica. Oh, do you want to right just play her? Or... I got you. <laughs> oh, 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 Trying to download it so that way you guys can get off of my case about it, and at least I can it's sound us. a bit better. It's I'm very oh, sorry about my anger, and I'm very it's sorry fine. for the entirety Con. of this whole Con. situation. Can I was I trying my best to go ahead and amend it and try to get back in control of my life. Oh, Kaneko, it's like, you well, you can do that later. So I'm, like, I'm sorry if I made later. it sound like you were doing the wrong thing yeah, no, by like not you, having <laughs> the Discord app. That's not what I was trying to do. Oh, you can, like, you, we can just do the entire session right now. It's like, uh, you don't have to do that right now. You really don't have to. It's fine. Your mic sounds fine right now. We you can go fine. with this session. <sighs> also sorry for my recent biological impairments, including my nose, my... Oh, everything. no, you don't no, need no, that. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, Literally it's Literally not nothing you fault. could have done about it. It's fine. It's fine. You're fine. Girl, you do it's not fine. need to apologize for yourself. Oh, you're you're fine. Don't worry. I feel like I do. Oh, no, you don't need to. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Everything's fine. Ow! 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 Oh, my eye! Okay. <laughs> I 
Okay, there it goes. Oh, come on! Yeah, I was downloading the desktop app as well. Okay. Oh, that's, that's great. It, it's, fi it's fine. Just, you're good. Are you still okay to read this part? Yeah, I am. Hi. Actually, I think that, um... Yeah, the web app sometimes has that sort of crackling stuff. Like with you, I think it's filter. fine. I think it's fine. We don't need to worry about, to worry about this. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm gonna make things. We can better. worry about this later, Con. It's okay. It's okay if it's you fine, can read it. Fine. Then right back at you. There we go. <gasps> Whenever six years, you haven't changed a bit. Although your body's gotten gigantic, you're still a kid inside. Ah! A kid, too! A kid, too! Well, you aren't gonna be a kid forever, are you, Maria? I mean, you're gonna grow from being a cute kid to a young lady, ain't you? To a cute young lady, oh fuck, I got- I screwed that up. You're gonna go from being a kid to a cute young, cute young lady, ain't you? And when that happens, <laughs> that flat as a board chest will be on Jessica's level, you know. When that happens. No! God damn Stop, Battler, no! Oh, so should we put Battler in horny jail now? Yes. 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 No! When that happens, let me rub it, okay? It. Promise! Oh, no! Warning, there's other horny people there. I thought you said that we wouldn't have this in your minute. It gets, it gets better! <laughs> ah! Because he's written by Ryukishi, he has to have him creeping on the child character. Ryukishi <laughs> just simply can't resist it. Every, but he's really a nice guy in Every step that I take oh. is another mistake to you. <laughs> oh my god. I think Khan is uh, wrestling with her dog again. Oh no, there we go. Plus, I also had to take two sneezes away to my left side of my mic. Understand. Oh, that is impressive. Oh, yeah. I do the funny kid noise. <laughs> Fuck allergies. Ah! You rub it! Promise! No, you ah! don't promise that shit. No, 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 Maria Chan, what the fuck? <laughs> You can't make that kind of promise, okay? That's bad, bad, bad. Huh? Huh? Uh, did... Oh, did Neko drop oh, out? She's oh, she's to the desktop app. I think she's swimming to the desktop Yeah, app. she's doing the desktop app. I really hope that actually solves the issue. Even if it doesn't, it's still fine. Whatever. Oh, okay. uh, I... She back. Back, yo. Bars on the top of the bottom. Oh, well, yeah, Holy yeah, that's, shit! That's the Problem fixed. That sound better. It's Problem all fixed. Bars on the bottom this of the solved. top of this thing. What do I do? Wait, what's going on? Uh -huh. Fine. Your mic works better than ever. It's the best. Well, seriously, you just fixed everything. <laughs> what was the what? question? Yeah. It works. It works the yeah, best like that it's ever been. Your filter isn't making like a buzzing noise every single sentence you say. It's so much better now. It's very clear. I was making a buzzing noise every time my filter went off. Uh, yes. I guess? You'll, you'll be able to relook uh, the day. day. It wasn't always. It, it worked now. Uh, here we go. Hang on. Wow, that is like Stupid shockingly thing. clear. Like you're making the best use out of your mic now. Yeah, there you go. Oh god <laughs> damn it. Read it! No! Bad dog! Enough! Even the dog sounds better. <laughs> the, dog <of> HD. <laughs> the universe is fucking conspiring against us every step of every day. <laughs> I would still, like, I still use uh, Pusha Talk, though, even for these. You might still want to do that just to block out those sounds. Yeah, for some reason, my uh, Discord app just doesn't respect my hardware mute, so I have to use the fucking mute oh, button. Dude, like, back whenever we were doing Higarashi uh, before streaming, uh, whenever I had the hardware mute on, 
uh, if I played th something through my desktop, it would play it through my mic. Like one time we were having a dramatic moment in Igarashi, and I was and somebody posted like the Batman theme in Discord, and I clicked on it, and so just during this emotional scene, you hear. Ding, ding, ding. Oh no, there's definitely something funny about him having like a very casual expression while doing the hand grope animation. <laughs> Uh, also, the what for the fuck from me was actually me forgetting that Battler did this, so that was me speaking, so that was my bad. George would never say what the fuck. <laughs> I, I remember <laughs> most of the horrible things Battler does. <sighs> Alright. Huh? I promise to let him rub it. Oh. I keep my promise. Oh. Always keep promises. Always keep them, huh? Maria, you're a really earnest, good girl. The guy you marry is gonna be really lucky. Just uh, don't try to smooth over the topic with the promise intact. Maria, that promise never happened. Never. Mm. Uh, honey, it's better that way. I realize now, it really didn't feel like a proper gathering of cousins without Battler Coon in that group, did it? These six years have been kinda lonely. Yeah, <sighs> hold on a second, now my notifications are coming in through my Discord at the same time that they're doing all of this shit. Uh, it's okay. And it's annoying as fuck! Oh, whatever, I can fix this afterwards. That's true. We weren't able to goof off like this. Still, we did have some pretty constructive conversations, don't you think? Stuff about preparing for our future, exam taking, or finding jobs. Oh, I'm sorry. Now that I'm here, there's just this stupid babbling. And it didn't need help in that department. But I'm having fun this year. Uh, uh. That's true. I agree this year is the most fun. Maria's sincere words probably spoke for everyone. When George Anarchy stroked Maria's head, she giggled like a happy kitten. Pardon me. Your meal is prepared. A timid knocking sound and an equally timid young woman's voice came through the door. Jessica answered brightly. Shannon, come in! You remember Battler, don't you? Jessica's there from the bed and opened the door. There's the servant girl who was definitely about our age. Sorry. I had to sneeze. It, it's been quite some time since we last met, Badler Senna. It's nice to see you after six years. I'm Shannon. Standing my presence and trembling a little, she bowed deeply. Wow! This guy had me surprised, but Shannon Chan, you've shocked me just as much! You're gonna do a total beauty, haven't you? you? Your words are too much, they're too good for me. <laughs> Seriously! The food on this island must be really nutritional, no? What are you eating? What are you training to, to get your boobs that big? Fucking hell. <laughs> you had to bring up where his reaction face was, and now he's there. There he is. Guess I have to feel him a bit and see whether yours are just because they're bigger, okay? <laughs> if both hands poise and slide for dribbling from my mouth, I closed in. Take my honor and justice. I like to point out that I don't suffer from some strange disease make my, that makes my lymph nodes itch until I scratch my neck open and it can only prevent, be prevented by, by rubbing breasts. 
Okay, whoever posts porn from here out is a complete and utter nerd ball, and we get to go ahead and roast you live on Steam. Also, uh, you guys that just, that that just reference Hidemi Zala Syndrome? Yes, he did just reference Hidemi yeah. Zala Syndrome. They'll do that. They'll he do called that. everyone who succumbed to Hidemi Zala Syndrome a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my battler style way of communicating. You know, now that I think of it, nobody actually tried rubbing breasts to cure Hinami Zawa Syndrome. Oh, I'm sure yeah, nobody tried, tried it. Tried. I think Keiichi tried. I'm sure Tomitake tried it once or twice. <laughs> when a boy closes in on like a you girl like this... You realize the implications that behind that are, right? Yes, that's why yeah. I said it. <laughs> Horrible. When a boy closes in like a girl like this, 9 out of 10, to 9 out of 10 times I get slapped or clobbered, right? This is a battler sama original communication technique. Aiming for a gag like that to break the ice! With your own family. Well, this means I really do get to test them on the 1 in 10 chance, though, right? <laughs> yeah! I never asked for that much, though! <laughs> oh my no! god! No! But now, by now, my Wait, hands are less than, a, less than a centimeter away from close up. Chess, But the Counter-Strike had yet to come! <laughs> Wait, wait, can you switch to Old Sports quickly? I want to see I if it does switch to, You I can't. can't. I can't switch to Old Sports. Oh, right, I forgot. That sucks. Omineko is built different. <laughs> she understood what was going on, and fight? she was blushing and had her head lowered in embarrassment. She was just standing there with both hands probably joined in front of her. Not even trying to resist or cover her chest. <laughs> Whoa! I wasn't planning on this! <laughs> My fucking controller vibrated. <laughs> Please, hit me right now! Hit this rate, I'm seriously gonna touch them! Bruh. Bruh. Which is why I was glad that Jessica chose at that time to drive her elbow into the back of my head. Girl! Jessica! Thank you! <laughs> why the hell are you thanking me? Huh? No, no, no. My bad, Shannon Chan. Looks like I got a little too absorbed in your hypnotic chest. No more to the point. When someone gets that close, they've clearly got criminal intentions. Seriously, you've got to resist. But... You are an exalted guest, Badly Sama. Now look here. A crime's a crime whether I'm a guest or not. Ten centimeters around a girl's chest is like an air defense identification range. Someone trespassed within two centimeters. It's only it's already an invasion of airspace, and you launch a slap to the face on high alert. I couldn't do such a thing. We are that is furniture and of course she didn't want, want her breast to get touched. But if a guest so desired, she intended to sacrifice her own needs in an effort to, com to accommodate them. A girl like this needs some urgent protection. <laughs> in these days, and there's a dedicated and virtuous girl like this. <laughs> it makes my head spin. But no! No, no, no! I come at you with a perverted face! You smack me down! No perverts! No Fortnite! <laughs> you gotta complete the joke or it doesn't work. Please, it's a polite request. Smack me! Like this! Smack! <laughs> Smack! <laughs> I... I cannot comply with polite requests. <laughs> My dog agrees! One second. <laughs> Man, she has great tits! My god! <laughs> Christ, Bone, she's 16! She's 16! Damn it! <laughs> Do I be hitting on Mion and Sion now? Guys, this is Japan, right? The legal age is 14! Look, you don't- look, My dog looks, really hates my sister's dog. I can't do anything about my sister's dog right now, and all he's gonna do is continuously bark, and I can't leave him outside because it's totally raining, and I can't leave him in my room because he's just gonna be barking the entire time, and I don't know where else to put him. 
<laughs> it's it's fine. We can deal. We can deal with the well, occasional settle. Stuff. It's, it's nowhere near as bad as it was that other time. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We we're actually able to read a bit for a bit before another interruption. It's fine. Yeah. I I cannot comply with polite requests because I'm furniture. But I will comply with it if it's an order. Because that is my duty. <laughs> then, uh, then I'll make it an order. From now on, if Battler Cunt tries to t touch your breast, you are to counterattack with a slap. Alright? Yes. As you command. That is what I will do from now on. Badlasama, I hope you can keep this in mind. So Shan Chan declared, while bowing elegantly to me. Her facial expression was radiant. I gave her a thumbs up signal. You got it! Six, year ago, six years ago, you might have been mistaken for a servant's daughter who just came into the lens at Lend a Hand sometimes. But now you're a full fledged adult servant. How many years has it been? Well. I've had the pleasure of serving this household for about ten years. She's that. The kanji for her name is, re is a red as Shannon. This is another far from typical name for a Japanese person. Being a kid back in those days, I had taken it in her name without paying much attention. But for her to be called something like that is pretty unusual given that she isn't even a member of the Ashur Mia family. Maybe it's like a servant's professional name or something. If so, that's a thing that's real. I can kind of understand why that Cannon Coon's name sounds that way, the way it does too. She's a long-term servant who served her uh, served here since she was six. Since her body had changed radically, she didn't match my memories. We used to know each other six years ago. It looked like she was just about as shy as she had been in the past. There go. But I got the sense that she had become imbued with a charm befitting a girl her age, especially her breasts. <laughs> Her chest beefers. That kid uh, we met earlier, Kanakun, is her little brother. He is not exactly my little brother. Still, he loves me like a big sister. He didn't cause you any trouble, did he? <laughs> He's the same as always. It's a shame he doesn't act just a bit more sociable. It seems Canon Kun has caused trouble. <sighs> I apologize. He didn't cause any trouble at all. As a fellow man, I understand how moody he can get you can get at that age. I'm surprised he isn't sociable. Combat all the time too. Get called unsociable. My cannon. Ah. <laughs> Maria Sama, you are not unsociable at all. Uh. It was nice to feel like him. Uh -huh. Um, you said the meal was ready, right? Ah, uh, yes. My apologies. The preparations for your meal have been carried out, so I shall be guiding you all to the mansion. Shannon bowed again formally and returned to her duty mode. Who is that have made her stick around for, more, for any more light conversation? It would actually make it harder for her to do her job. So we got up off our butts to avoid interfering with her work any further. Shall we go to the mansion, then? You're probably all starting to get hungry as well, right? Sure am! I always look forward to meals when go to here cooking. That guy seems like a chef at this famous hotel, so he's super good at it. Oh-ho! I look forward to that. Let's go, Maria! We're gonna stop ourselves like pigs! No, no. 
You can't just take everything Battler Kun says seriously, okay? Because it's all jokes. <laughs> Come on, let's go. <laughs> That's right, everything I say is a joke. <laughs> Under Shane Chan's guidance, we headed towards the mansion. Like your love life? Oh, damn. I've been getting more cutthroat with my insults lately. Yeah. yeah. Nice. The Battler's earned it. Yeah. He the Met once again by the mixed and magnificent Rose Garden. We continued onward as it came into view. The imposing mansion of the Ashramia main family. It had apparently been built shortly after the war, so you could feel the dignity of, the al of, of almost half a century hanging about it. On the surface, the building was gorgeous, being as old as it was, seemingly lacking in modern amenities like air conditioning. According to Je Jessica, midwinter was especially rough, well, with all the drafts. Well, it's not that they couldn't take the, take the Kotatsu out. My family has a summer home that has the same thing. It doesn't Only have, she like, cries eating. in the corner as this man laughs. There he is! <laughs> Dub Jeeves! As we enter the entrance hall, an aged servant greeted us. Now, Can you make me a sandwich? <laughs> no! <laughs> now, no. Him, now him, I remember. <laughs> as the most senior member of the staff, Genji-san serves as the head of the servants. Digital? Digital. Digital. Joshua, you're Digital. needed on set. Cannon. It may have, it may have went to get a drink, not knowing oh. his role was gonna come up as soon as it did. He went to go Rack make a sandwich. But he's saying something. Oh, his fucking oh, mic phone. isn't working. Oh no! No no! We're fucking cursed. <laughs> Hey, 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 Summer, we have not met in a long while. I'll take it. No, I'm kidding. I'm not gonna do it. Taking my role. Oh my god, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, we can yes, hear you. Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, yes, we can yes. hear you now. Okay, what good. Happened? What the fuck? Oh, uh, my mic's very fucking finicky right now, but I can make it. Finicky, we are cursed, huh? aren't we? Yeah. So cursed. I don't yeah, care. Is... Now everyone, shut up. I'm Your mic caught the con flow. I'm but right, 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 right. Shut up. <clears throat> About the summer. We have not met in a long while. As our eyes met, he saluted us with a composed voice. He didn't quite give a refined a bow as Gota. <coughs> but it was a bow that had feeling, even it wasn't polished to the same degree. Andy san it's been absolutely ages. You look well. Thank you. I have been quite well. And you, About the summer. I see you have become a splendid young man yourself. I would even say you have grown to somewhat resemble the master in his youth. I'm looking like grandfather? I guess that means grandfather was pretty popular w when he was young. <laughs> From here on, I shall take Shannon's place and accompany you. Please come this way. Jan Jan bowed deeply and saw us off. Leaving the entrance hall, we head to the dining hall under Genji-san's guidance. Genji-san, just like Kumasawa-san, stood in stark contrast to us young people, who had grown beyond recognition over the last six years. His figure was exactly the same as in my, as in my memories of six years ago. It seemed like time had stopped since we last met. Genji-san was a silent and diligent person. He was like grandfather's close aide or caregiver. In fact, you could even go so far as to say he was grandfather's right-hand man. Actually, it seems like he was by Grandfather's side more than my late grandmother was. According to Jessica, Grandfather trusts him more than any of his blood relatives. But I wonder how long he served. Never asked for details, but I think I heard, heard he's been here since the beginning. When the mansion was constructed. That is to say, he dedicated half his life to serving here. No wonder Grandfather trusts him. As we got through the open, the open ceilinged hall behind Genji-san... I found something I had no memory of from six years ago. It was an awfully big portrait hung right in the front of the stairs that rose to the second floor. Without thinking, I stopped walking under its spell. Since I suddenly stopped, Maria was following behind me. Ran into my back. Uh -huh. 
Ah, uh, sorry. Hey, Jessica. That picture used to be there. The point of the large and conspicuous portrait hanging in the hall. Everyone else stopped too. Uh, right. When you last came here, that hadn't been hung yet, had it? When was it again? I think, if my memory doesn't fail me, it was around a year before the last. You are correct. In April of la a year before last. The fuck, hold on, let me retry that. <clears throat> you are correct. In April of the year before last, the master had this painting put on display, which he had instructed an artist to paint for him some time prior. Grandfather did that. So he went out of his way to have it drawn. The portrait displayed a woman in an elegant dress. You have a sense of refinement. It would suit, suit the western style of this mansion. I couldn't have guessed her age, but the sharpness and obvious strength of, of will in her eyes gave me the impression of youth. It was a different feeling than the composed mood of a, of a middle-aged woman that, that are often in famous pictures. If the woman hadn't had normal black hair, it might have gone through, through with the portrait of my long-deceased grandmother in her prime. However, the woman in the portrait had beautiful golden hair, and didn't look Japanese at all. So, who is she then, this woman? As though trying to show off her knowledge, Maria answered that with a simple question with a simple question with authority. Huh. I know Beatrice. Be what? Beatrice. She's the witch. Didn't you ever hear about her long ago? The witch? You mean... of this island? I think I already said this. Rokenjima is a small island that's only about 10 kilometers around. However, considering that, the only, that, that only the Yashirmiya family lives here, that's quite large. But only a harbor in the site around the mansion was set up to be lived in. Beyond that, the island remained un as untouched as it was when it was still un uninhabited. I understand how dangerous a vast, empty forest with no lamplight, phones, or people passing through it all it actually is. You need to shift your, your urban assumptions a little. You see, if by any chance you fell down a hole in the depths of the forest and sprained your ankle, Apologies, I'm going to bump the music a smidge. Actually, wait here, I can just do it fucking locally. I'll just change the audio a little bit. Nice. Here we go. Because, like, if you guys can hear it enough, right? Oh, yeah, the Discord. I, I can hear fine. it. It's a bit low on the stream. You're, uh, yeah, but, like, I actually it's on, like, stream at, really like, 25%. That's why I couldn't hear it. It's fine now. Here, you know what? I'll just... Don't mind me. Just taking notes. Here, I'll just... Next. <laughs> Uh, as I was oh, saying, I uh, shouldn't look at this, right? No, you're fine. Here, I moved, uh, it, up one... said that it, was I moved it up one notch. How's that sound? That's good. It's fine. Cool. Word. So, you see? Yeah, I know. No one would come for you. If it then got dark, the forest, where the <laughs> streetlights would become enshrouded in complete darkness. Ow. Also, since there obviously aren't any guideposts here, it's easy to get lost and lose your sense of direction in this dark forest. Nowadays, most people see a forest as a peaceful place. But the people of, the, of bygone eras, before the light of civilization drew out the, drew out the night. Forests were like oceans on land, geographically separating one culture from another. As the fishermen who go out into the ocean occasionally have their lives put in danger despite their technical knowledge. Technical knowledge also demanded of hunters who went out into the forest. And their lives were occasionally put in danger just the same. If a child were to go play in that dangerous forest, something terrible might happen. Some parent must have thought must have thought that. Maybe my grandmother, or possibly the man must the man himself. My grandfather might have said it. Or maybe it was a story handed down on this island from long, long ago. 
There's a terrible witch in the forest, so you must not go in. Thus, Rokenjima's ghost story was born. That is the legend of the witch of Rokenjima. When we say witch on this island, referring to the master of the vast and savage forest. Which reminds me, when I was little and stayed at the mountain, during the eerie nights when the wind and rain struck the windows. Stories like the Witch of the Force is roaming around in search of a sacrifice would scare the heck out of me. Beatrice, huh? As I searched my memory prompted by Anarchy, I did vaguely remember being told that that was her name when I was very small. Right! Still, I completely forgot that the Witch of that legend had an elegant name like Beatrice. God damn. Don't tell me that Grandfather went out of his way to have her depicted in the painting just because us grandchildren refused to believe him. It's the witch from Grandfather's delusions. Ever since he had this picture hung up, he's been losing the distinction between fantasy and reality. Like E3 nerds. <laughs> to us, it's no more than the witch from his imagination, but as to Grandfather, she's a being who exists on this island. Exist. That's why she says he had the picture painted, so that we'd understand. <laughs> Creeps the hell out of me! Milady. To the Master, this is an important portrait, as well he is still hoping for Gino and Smash. I must request strongly <clears throat> that you must not say such a thing in front of him. I know that! You couldn't get me to say it even if you begged me. Jessica turned away after glaring a second at the portrait. Let's go. We're making everyone wait in the dining hall. Ah! Uh, hungry! Only a small portion of this island is controlled by the Ashramia family. If all of the wild rema remainder. Well, all the. If all of the wild remainder was the witch of Beatrice's domain. And one could say that she was a being who actually ruled over Rokenjima. That unsettling, ominous feeling I had felt on the boat trip, when the shrine had been struck by lightning, revived within me a bit. At the time, Kumasao-san tried to tell, us, tell an ominous story about Rokenjima and had been stopped by Jessica. I didn't know what she had tried to tell us about the island, but there was one thing I did know. Rokenjima's ruler was not the Ashuramiya family. It was the witch. Beatrice. Yes. Because this is the witch's island. Damn it. It's not doing it. Oh, no oh. wonder my thing is off center. Okay. That blur! Oh! Slow! When I looked around, everyone was already heading towards the dining hall. I heard they chased after them. Walked up to the huge double doors that led to the dining hall. Genji-san knocked. I have brought the children. If you will excuse me. The door was open and we were all invited inside. The dining hall, which screamed filthy rich, featured a superb long table, which was obviously designed with no other purpose than to make the guests conscious of their rank. And our parents were already seated in, in, in accordance with that, with that ordering. Yeah. Goddamn rich people. You late, brats. Hurry up and take your seats. The old bastard presses to sit. Only the places where we would sit were empty at the long table, which only made us feel our tardiness all the more. At the very end of the table, which you might call the seat of honor, was for the most highly ranked and reserved for Grandfather. It was still empty. He was probably planning to come in last to make himself look important. The seating order, as you face the seat of honor, went from left to right in rows of two, with the ranking being lower the further you were from it. So on the left-hand side of the row close to the seat of honor was the second ranked seat, belonging to the eldest of the adult siblings, Uncle Cross. Look, he hadn't arri looked like he hadn't arrived yet, either, so that seat was empty. Then opposite him, on the right-hand side of the first row, sat the eldest daughter of the family, Auntie Eva, ranked to number three. 
The left hand side on the second row is for number four. There sat the old bastard, Rudolph, as the third of the siblings. Opposite him sat number five, the youngest sibling, Auntie Rosa. Going like this, you might think the next ones would come after them would be their husbands and wives, but. Yes, again, because the left hand seat is, the uh, is in the following third row, meaning rank number six was actually Jessica's seat. Opposite her was George Anarchy. Then, the seat next to Jessica was me. And opposite me was Maria. And next to me on the left hand side of the fifth row, all the way down at number 10, finally came out Nazi. Opposite her was Uncle Hideyoshi. Next on Nazi, in the sixth and final row on the left hand side, was Kyrie san. The seat opposite to Kyrie san had been laid out like the others, but was empty. According to the ranking system, that spot was the seat where Aunt Rose's husband should be sitting. He hasn't come, as far as I know, but the table had been laid for, for his set. Seat, yeah. These kind of ranking orders usually permit uh, the spouse a corresponding status, but for the Ashramia family, had an original kind of ranking. Maybe it's left over, for, left over of male chauvinism. Under the notion that the mother's womb is only a temporary house for the child and she contributes no genes, the children of direct descent, descent would have the highest ranking, followed by the grandkids. Maybe the spouses with no blood ties would be considered the last in line. It's terrible. But according to that ranking order, grandmother, if she was still alive, would be in position even lower than mine. In youth, obey your father. For marriage, your husband. After aging, your children. I left over the times when they used to say, Woman, no home in three worlds. Long ago, when I was still capable, incapable of figuring all this out, I thought it was so, so great that we could all chat with the adult siblings sitting in their group and us cousins in ours. However, now that I can re-examine the seating order after growing up a bit, it's has some very complicated feelings in me. On Natsuhi, uh, Natsuhi married to the eldest son of the family, responsible for managing the household, number two for all practical intents and purposes, that to my right. That she was two steps lower than me in the ranking order. Difficult to guess who was going through what was going through her head. As I made a small apologetic gesture before sitting down. How nice to see you, Bad Lokun. You've grown quite tall, haven't you? <laughs> uh, yeah. Normal life, you know. Food, food, meals, eating. And suddenly I was this tall. <laughs> <laughs> but do grow fast, don't they? <laughs> How tall are you? Uh, I guess about 180 centimeters. No, wait. You missed your moment. You're supposed to jump in with, did you do anything besides eat? Huh? I'll have to make you a little bit louder. There we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. At a moment, she gave a small laugh. It seems she couldn't quite figure out what, what she was supposed to be laughing at. This woman was on Nazi. She's the wife of the eldest son of the family. And she's my dad's older brother's wife. It's easier to it's easier to get it if I just call her Jessica's mother. It feels bad it feels bad to say it like this, but not that I hated her, but I didn't particularly like her. She never got into our kids' circle, and my only impression of her was as someone who had always talked about complicated stuff with my parents, like a crabby expression on her face. Fact is the the fact is that having barely ever exchanged words, I hesitated a lot just to even know, uh, now about how to approach her. And it was pretty much a flop. The silverware had been tidily set up on the table, but that meal itself hadn't been brought in. As a rule, the meal didn't start until, until the man at the head of the table was taken his seat. That was as long as Grandfather, the highest ranked, didn't come. Lunch would be indefinitely on hold. Not even the appetizers would come. In other words, as in the dining hall was the sound of our parents as they withstood their hunger and waited. On tender hooks for grandfather to come. Except the grandfather I remembered always showed up on the right time when we ate together like this. He wouldn't ever have been so late as to have everyone else waiting for him. Grandfather was pretty late. As far as I can remember, he was always strict about staying on time. Maybe six years ago, yeah. But not lately. Seriously, he's off in his own little world now. He doesn't even show up at family meals. I figured he'd at least stick around for today's meal, though. 
That said, if he doesn't turn up, I'll be a hell of a lot more relaxed and happier to boot. Jessica. After being scolded by her mother, Jessica faced the other way, sticking her tongue out. No way around it. Nothing to do but wait for the host to arrive. I glanced at the clock, I saw that it was almost 20 minutes past 12. Oh, I hold grudges over food, man. The age master at the Ashurmia Head House, Ashurmia Kinzo. He was there in his study. The clock showed noon, but he didn't even attempt to get up. With reading glasses on his face, he stacked up old-fashioned books with elaborately designed bindings, one on top of another beside him, immersing himself in their readings. It definitely didn't look like he, it was for his leisure. On the contrary, he exuded, he exuded impatience crisis, as every minute, every second, were precious. The ceiling room was dense with dancing dust particles. The air stagnated with a mix of smells and various elixirs, each giving off their own suspicious stench. They were somehow sweet and heavy. For anyone with a good nose, the first thing they'd do after entering would be to open a window and ventilate the room. Knocking against the study door had been going on for a while. A voice calling father sometimes mingled, mingled with the knocks. As Kinzo heaved a deep sigh, he snapped shut the old books he had in his hands and slammed it onto the table. Then he yelled at Kraus, who was continuing to knock on the door. Silence! Will you stop that noise, fool? Who taught who thought who taught you the door shall be opened until you unto you if you knock? They crucified that imbecile. Do you wish the same upon yourself? Father. Today is the day of the family conference. It comes just once a year. Everyone has gathered downstairs. Please come out. Oh, fuck a guy. <laughs> Kras called out to his father through the door. Kins always shut himself up in the study and hated even letting his family into the room. For that reason, Kras had no choice but to call out from call out thus from the corridor. Molest me not! Everyone! Who is everyone? You refer to the fools trying to drag me out of here! Then kill them all! Chop them up, make them the firewood, feed them to the witch's hearth! Put a pot in that hearth and boil wormwood! And if it, and if still there, remain imbecile if, remain imbeciles enough uh, foolish enough as they dare to lure me out of here! Force them to drink in the broth of the apocalypse! Preserve the remainder in liquor! Ah, Genji! Where are you? Call for Genji! Have my demonic absence prepared! The whispering of the green fairy reaches me no longer! Ah, where is Genji? Call for Genji! What is the one I in that fucking spelling of Genji capitalize? Yee! <laughs> for the door, um. Kraus, Nanjo, and Genji kept waiting for the yeah, master of the um. house. Who had not come out? Hmm. Oh my god, I want to punch this guy! <laughs> Looks like he hates me to his core. My voice doesn't reach him anymore. Mm. Crush shrugged as if saying, It's no use! and smiled bitterly. I guess it's no use. He himself hadn't believed for a moment that his father would answer his calls. However, as if as it was the duty of the eldest son, he had formally made the request. Kenzo spent not uh, Kenzo son. Your son's daughters and grandchildren have come to see you now, you know. How about you show your face just a little? Shut up! Be silent! You dare admonish me, Nanjo! I did not call for you. I said to call for Genji! This is all just saying. Now hurry! Call from this instant! Time is short. The apostles are readying their trumpets. Why do you not understand that, you foolish sheep? Kinzo slammed hey. the old heavy book on the table over and over. What's up? I just noticed something. What's up? They're all in Japan, yeah. right? Then why are most all of his kids blonde? Eh, what? what do you mean all of his kids? Not all of them. Not all of them. 
Like two are. Just three of them. Uh, just uh, two. Uh, one kid and like one grandkid, I think. But blonde <laughs> hair isn't a trait in Japan. It's yeah, not there are some that's that's in anime. Look, look. It's that they're forced to dye their hair black <laughs> when they go to school, so that they fit in. That's yeah, still that's incredibly sus. I, I think it's just a trait of anime. I, I think it's just anime. It's I mean, like, Battler has red I'm hair. Go out on a also, safe. Yeah, we never do Steve Kinzo's yeah. yeah, as I was gonna say, why does Battler have red hair? The record obviously indicated his highest displeasure. Kinzo put his spectacles down and flew up from his chair. He spread his arms wide open. as a sing to a packed opera house. As if appealing to someone and yelled. Why? Why is there always something in my way? I would throw it all away. I would offer up everything. And there's only one thing I ask in repayment. Oh, Beatrice! If I could see your smile but one more time, I'd pull the smiles out of the earth and offer them all up to you! Oh, Commander of the Locust Legion, reap the smiles of the earth! <coughs> All is filthy. All is irksome. Why must I suffer the impediment of this on this most precious of days? <laughs> Call for Genji. <laughs> I have no idea what he's yelling. <laughs> I guess he's finally gone nuts. Grosun! Grosun! Isn't that a bit harsh to say to your birth father? My dad is already dead. Damn! All that's here is a phantom of what he once was. At any rate, as long as he lacks the will to leave that room, there's nothing we can do. Kenzo son. Choking coughs continue to pour out from the study. I'm going back downstairs. Uh, it would be a waste to let that lunch Goda's so proud of get any colder. It's one of the few things the others have to look forward to here. Hmm. Cross spun on his heels, looked at his wristwatch, mumbling and acting as though he had wasted time, doing something he knew would be in vain. Genji-san, father is calling for you. Keep him company. Certainly. Got nothing better to do anyway. Gals? Dr. Uh Nonjo. Let's go eat. If we stay here any longer, even our sense of taste will go insane from this sweet smell. Without waiting for Nanjo, Kraus went downstairs. Genji urged Nanjo to go and eat. Nanjo looked first at Kraus's back as he disappeared down the stairs. Then to the study door as he let out a deep sigh. I'm sorry, Genji-san. Please. Yes, please leave it to me. If possible, don't give him alcohol. It's too powerful a habit. Is Genji not here yet? <laughs> Who dares keep Genji from coming? Ah, where is Genji? Call for Genji! Ellie. No, please leave it to me. Hmm. Sorry. Nanjo gave a small tuck of his head and descended the stairs. Genji saw him off and knocked on the study door. My lord. Hey, did it someone say my name? Huh? What? What? No? Say Genji, not Shelly. Yeah, it's Genji. Yeah, Genji! <laughs> Why must you make me wait so long? There was no one there, I trust. Yes. I am alone. 
Kins returned to his seat in the study and pressed an old-fashioned switch on the table. His Nintendo Switch. As opposed to one of those newfangled switches. My lord, may we please play Animal Crossing? I look quite ill. <laughs> Molest me not! I did not get the villager I wanted in my town! And I threw it from the window! After a small delay, the heavy sound of the door unlocking could be heard. Kinza believed that his family might try to break into his study. Perhaps someone had once opened the, d the window from some air and scattered some important documents or something. And that had made him extremely upset. Yeah, Kinza just placed a small lock in his room, making it so that without his permission, nobody could enter. Unlocking himself in the, in the dungeon he, had he himself created. Genji, who had he had trusted the most, relatively freed to enter the room, but even that was not absolute. If Kinza was in a bad mood, even he wouldn't be able to enter. Anyone else would be limited into holding a conversation through the door, not even seeing his face. Most of the time, they wouldn't even get a real conversation. However, that didn't pose any particular problem for the family. That's because they had no reason to go out of the way to interfere with the resentment of their the cantankerous and aged head. That says retirement. He, retirement of the of the cantankerous and aged head. The fact that he was completely immersed in his odd research, and always locked up in the hideaway was something of benefit. They made the most of his refusal to leave the study, and trusting him, the hands of the servants, while they themselves kept their distance. Genji, my usual. I'm busy. Yes. Genji ached, uh, Gen Genji headed to the corner of, his, of the study. There, suspicious looking bottles boasting venomous colors were on display. They were actually liquor, but considering that they were placed in this shady looking room, you don't suspect that they might have, might be ghastly poisons. The inside of the study was filled with a mountainous library of outlandish books that Kinzo had amassed. They were bizarre old books, some banned, and each and every one of them had either forbidden, cursed, or sealed. Of course, if one were to actually call them old books, Kinzo would fly into a rage and say something like this. Call them grimoires. You fucking nerd. They were candles which had melted into suspicious looking fashion and taken on peculiar forms and all manner of other strange objects, probably having something to do with black magic. The constellations covering the celestial globe would have caused anyone who knew the night sky well to raise an eyebrow. The illustrations inscribed in old books, haphazard left a note left open, ranged from the religious and mythical to the demonic and grotesque, as well as bizarre diagrams of various magic circles. And above all, the sweet, poisonous smell that had filled the room which to those entering for the first time would surely be a profound assault in their senses. And, uh, and making them lose their grip on reality. I realized they just kind of, I took out like an entire sentence in like one in two words. <laughs> Inside that study, Genji, with his well-trained hands, prepared K Kinzo's usual drink. If you didn't know the ghastly dark green liquid that filled the, c the complexly designed bottle was liquor, you certainly wouldn't want to put it in your mouth. That's absinthe for ya. Well, it's 68% alcohol, and it's made with wormwood. He poured a small quantity of the spirit into the glass. There's a cube of sugar and a strangely shaped spoon, and then poured water from a pitcher over it. Strangely, when the colorless water is poured into it, the dark green liquid turned a cloudy white. It created a small visual illusion that the water had caused the chemical reaction, it made it all the more difficult to perceive the concoction as liquor. This aided an original flavor that Kinzo liked, and fine-tuned the taste. There was no recipe. Its success was measured only by Kinzo's mood swing when he drank it. He learned how to make it only after many decades. Genji placed the, gla the, ga the glass on a tray and then made his way over to Kinzo. Kinzo now gazing out the window. As you asked, my lord. Thank you. Kinzo had regained his composure. Much that he was now unrecognizable as the man who'd been shouting, screaming, and yelling just moments before. And that man's black back dwelt in a dignity and intelligence made, sim made plain simply by how he tilted his glass and gazed down at the scenery beyond the window. Genji, in order to allow Kenzo to set down his glass at any time, motionlessly waited behind and to his left, as though he were, he were a living sideboard. As he did, 
the kinder st uh, stuck out just just the glass. His gaze still directed at the world outside the window. Just a mouthful remaining. And the gesture intended to set, it, to, set it, to set it upon the tray. As Genji expected, it was a motion to hand the glass over to Genji. Drink it, my friend. That is more than I deserve. Oh, I'm yawning, fuck. Yeah. Only for ceremony between us. Drink it, friend. Thank you. Genji respectfully received the glass and inclined it a, a little to taste its contents. Then he downed it in one gulp. I intended to imitate your, uh, con con your concoction, but no matter how I try, I cannot replicate the taste. The way you make it is pure relish. Thank you very much. It is the fruit of your guidance, my lord. <clears throat> Kinto smiled at his loyal subject, who refused to put aside rank even when asked to. However, he was not making fun of him. It was a rela it was relaxed, like the smi like a smile at a close friend's unriddled unriddable bad habit. Yeah. We have grown old, you and I. And I forgot my age a long time ago. That I was permitted to live the life I have until today has been all thanks to you, my lord. Kinsuke with thin smiles to say that he did he didn't need compliments. You have served me exceedingly well these years. My sons call me eccentric. The servants that, that were once many, all of them, retired in their growing fear of me. Only you, even now, serve me. That is more than I deserve. I doubt that I, that I have much time left to live. My sons are vultures. Lazily waiting for my inheritance to fall into their hands. Hmm. That fool, Kraus, squanders money like water. Throws away two gold coins to obtain one. With that, he deludes himself into saying he has earned money. He was a slave to money, thinking of me as a hen or whatnot. As if, as if when I die, she'll even use my carcass to make broth. Dunce Rudolph just wants to fool around with, with women! Rosa bore the baby of a nobody! Jessica's incompetent and illiterate! Don't lose none of what it takes to be a man! Battler is a fool who threw away the honor of the Ashramia family! And Maria is obscene Ew. to the eye! Why? Why is the Ashramia blood so incompetent? Is there anyone worthy to inherit the glory I built? Of course, I know that it is Beatrice's curse. I know it. Ah, the Golden Witch. Is this to be your, your revenge against me? Hate me if you wish. Run away if you wish. I won't let you go. I won't let you go. Won't let you go. Won't let you go. You are mine. You cannot be anywhere but in my arms. You're my entire life! I'll continue to whisper for all eternity in my birdcage to me. Only to me! Beatrice. Why? Why won't you give me back your smile? Oh! Oh! Beatrice! <laughs> oh! <laughs> After howling, Kinzo choked once again. He into the tray and the glass down as he patted his master's back. Genji's facial expressions did not change. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Genji's facial expressions did not change. It was al always like this. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. After his almost arranged outburst, the past few minutes settled down. Almost. Kinzo regained his composure once more. The way his attitude changed was like seeing two different people. A wild Kinzo and a composed Kinzo. Living together inside one body. And so... I have decided... I cannot stand sp I cannot stand spending this insipid remainder of my life procrastinating like this! If I had any final coins left to gamble, 
and choose to abandon them all to the whims of the demon's roulette. Huh? The power of magic is always determined by the risks staked upon it. Like visiting a shrine at the hour of the ox in an ancient Japanese sorcery. They nail a curse doll to a tree. The magic power dwells on incurring the, that, the risk that it, that it will be seen before seven days pass. The more dangerous the risk, the stronger the magic power will be. All the various miracles that appear in myth can be called crystals of admonishing magic power. Obtained through miraculously low probabilities and astronomical risks. That Moses' part of the Red Sea was no miracle of gods! It was the other desperate risk weighed upon the scales of oppression, of being cornered by soldiers on the Red Sea's shores, which gave birth to miraculous magic power! Yet the same thing occurs again, on the same scope, which you will no doubt not part. That's because Moses managed to speculate, spectacularly draw out the single miracle carved from the roulette of those in power, which has more pockets than our Sogi. 10 to the 56th power, and Nayuta, 10 to the 60th power, multiply together! <laughs> the power of tr to triumph over astronomical odds. Yes. Magical power is, in other words, having the luck to grasp miracles! To obtain great magical power, one must bear a risk that is hopelessly great. Those who possess no magic would call the this not a bet, but pure deception. Desperation! Fuck. However, hey, I am the only. Hey, I'm the only one allowed to post the Gamzy gif. What? I'm, I'm not even looking in there. Why are you people posting fucking? Why are you people posting Homestuck during the Echo times? Because you said miracles, motherfucker. Also, that bit about ten to the fifty-sixth sixth power is not in the original fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, that. At least that's the, that's the thing that the gets added in with yeah, okay. the, this translation. Oh jeez, I see. Oh god. I thought I installed the fucking witch hunt one, but oh well. However, those who truly do pass magical power can grasp hold of that miracle and make the enigma come into being. And if that power exists within me, I will seize that miracle. It will make the wish that I devoted my life toward come true. Kendall looked up to the sky outside the window. He spread his arms if appealing to someone up in the skies. And if, if I were to have what it takes to obtain that miracle, Oh, Beatrice. Beatrice, show me your lovely smile once more. No matter how much time passes, your face does not vanish. It will see your smile. That is all! I will turn everything you granted me. I will turn all the glory I've gained since that day. I don't need fortune, prestige, or gold. I will turn everything you granted me. I just want to see your smile. I beg of you, Beatrice! His nonsensical yell segued into a scream, and then into a wail. Kenzo crumpled onto the floor, and clawed at it with both of his hands. Genji had no choice but to wordlessly watch over his master's lament. Fuck my throat. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. No, that is not the right one. Dude, come on. Wait, what? <laughs> she may be 500 years old, but lolly is lolly. You don't oh, loot the lolly. Uh, Crimson uh, Crimson posted a, gif, posted a gif of Beatrice from ReZero. Ah. Uh. Oh, God. Okay. Nor, whenever you're ready. Well, ladies and gentlemen... The head of the family is not in his best shape. He considers it a great shame that he will not be able to partake in lunch with you all, you having assembled especially for this long-awaited yearly meeting. Goda, let the lunch begin. Certainly. Well then, ladies and gentlemen, we shall begin today's luncheon. Dr. Nanjo, his father's condition that bad? Surely he could have at least showed his face? Rather than his physical condition, it's his mood. Doubly no. And for that, there is no medicine I can prescribe. Oh, come on, for God's sakes, mood again? 
we come to hear how he's doing, making time in our schedules in this damn busy season of autumn. That's just... Hmm. <laughs> then you got what you wanted, Rudolph. You managed to hear how he's doing. Or do you want to take my place and try to persuade our ill-humored father to come join us? Are you kidding? Rudolph shrugged. Apparently, even though Rudolph seemed to resent it the way his father did whatever he pleased, I'd rather avoid seeing his face if he could help it. Does it seem like his mood will improve before dinner? Kraus Nissan. I have no idea. You can try to ask Father directly. Although I think his mood will improve faster if we don't bother him. The only one who can bring Grandfather's temper under control is Genji-san. Pretty damn pathetic when you have a servant to deal with your own parents' bad mood. Jessica? Don't speak out of turn. I plan for her complaint to be heard only by her cousins. It would reach even Krause's ear. Yeah. Scolded, Jessica scowled away and turned. Okay. His condition can't be that bad, can it? With that kind of temper? I mean, if they were saying he's not feeling well, that'd be one thing. But if it's his mood that's bad, at least it's proof that he's gotten some fight in him. Well, Grandfather does laugh have especially strong willpower. But it doesn't mean that his body will always follow that. Since last year, he they kept saying that he was he had three months left. If the initial diagnosis was correct, grandfather has been prolonging his life by willpower alone. He we have to be concerned for him. Please stop praying for my grandfather. He's gained too much power and he's escaped the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> he is quite simply too angry to die, Bachelor. Won't we'll start with the family's heads, the seat's still empty. The man who should have been sitting there was already old. The brilliant glory which had, which had rebuilt the Ashirmia family in a single lifetime, slowly being forgotten. I seem to feel uncomfortable when the man began, when the meal began with that seat still empty. <laughs> Not, a, fan of, not a fan of the glass breaking. Oh, I like it. Mmm, -hmm. glassy. The Shirmia sure sure Family Conference was held once every year. It took place in the first weekend of October. If an old family were to use a pretentious name like Family Conference, Bruh. It's not even nothing more than a reunion of rarely seen relatives who greet each other surrounding, surrounded by buckets of sushi. However, in the Ashirmia family, where the sons and siblings are lent great fortunes, and, those on, those, and only, only those that achieve success in business are considered adults, it literally was a conference. How much of the fortune was invested? What kind of business was conducted? How much was earned? As a result, how much of the fortune borrowed from the main family could be repaid? Or alternatively, how much would be borrowed for future business ventures? Oh, brother. What lessons have they learned, and what could they learn from their mistakes? I think the topics like these have been discussed very seriously in the past. My dad had called it a bed of nails. Apparently, it used to be a very serious family meeting. One would commonly be shared with harsh and angry voices. They even get slapped in the face despite being well past the age for it. However, that was all thing of the past. By now, everyone achieves success in their own independent business ventures. Is on the on the road to becoming a normal yearly get together. Even so, being asked by Grandfather about the current state of, of play was an extremely stress-inducing event. And while, us, and when, while to us grandchildren it was nothing more than a simple meeting, to our parents it was still a real stomach ache. The absence of the man responsible for all this, whatever the reason behind it, but surely they made today's lunch even more del delicious. The phrase, when the cat is away, the mice will play, comes to mind. Well then, let me introduce Jessica's father, whose face I haven't seen for six years. The man sitting to my dad's left is his older brother and the father of Jessica. Uncle that. The, man, the name sure is easy to read. Grass. So many weird names, it warps your sense of what's normal and you start to think, Hey, what's wrong with Grass? That's pretty cool, actually. Just like with Aunt Nazi, I don't have many memories of speaking with Uncle Grass. 
Never been one to talk to children, and I felt like I, he was always talking with the adults. Just like on Nazi. The way my dad talked about him, it seemed like he used to be a pretty spiteful and unreasonable person. If what dad said is true, he used to be very do domineering as the oldest sibling. I was hated by Auntie Eva, Auntie Rosa, and the rest of the family. Odd, considering they're all, they're all having fun chatting together. Well, I guess even if their relationship was bad when they were children. And when people grow up and, and they go their separate ways, their relationship changes. That's probably what it is. After all, they have children of about the same age. If they share similar family environments, they probably all profit by exchanging opinions. And because of that, their parents' circle has been deep in conversation for what, for a while now about the exams Jessica and I are going to be taking. Jessica, in order to escape the discussion of exams with the old bastard sitting on her left, purposely facing to the right, firing off topic after topic so as to not give him an opening. Moving on, let's look at the, op the end opposite from Uncle Krauss and the others. In the very last seat at the table, an old gentleman with a sturdy physique sat facing Kyrie-san. This is my first time meeting him. I'd only just introduced him, I'd only just been introduced to him, but see, it seems that he's grandfather's personal doctor. A man called Nanjo. Apparently he's owned a huge clinic on the, on the nearby Nijima Island. They turned it over to his son and then began li living a life of leisure at it in his old age. He's known grandfather since the very beginning, when the mansion was first constructed on the island. And they have a history of going back several decades. He might be grandfather's companion in his suspicious hobbies. But surprisingly, it seems that his grandfather's ch he's grandfather's chess partner. I see. The kind of hobby does seem like a does seem very like our grandfather. With his love of Western style. You probably also call him the only person able to enter Okenjima who is neither a family member nor a servant. Listening on his conversation with the woman's folks seated next to him, he gave the impression of a calm old gentleman. Considering he's managed to put, to put up with our short-tempered grandfather for so long, I'm sure his big heart's nothing to laugh at. Still, even if he is a doctor, having someone from outside the Shemia family attending the family conference is a little odd. In that fact, I imagine that grandfather's condition has grown much worse. It may even be one of the major topics of discussion at the family conference. George Anaki was just saying it too. For the past year, Grandfather had been continually, continu continually pronounced as having very little le time left to live. It's awful to talk about. Grandfather's an extremely rich man. At the time of his death, his wealth will, will suddenly be released. Along with our parents' stomach acid. Surely leading to some, surely leading to some, some, some serious ulcers. With that kind of thing, the greater the number of ways it must be split, the more trouble will be caused splitting it. <laughs> this kind of talk would probably also be included in the family conference. Oh well. As long as anything to do with us children. Finally, even though he's absent, let me introduce our grandfather. The person who should be sitting in that seat of honor is Ashirmi Akinza. It really sucks. Give everyone else in the family these weird names. But he himself is the one who is conservative as hell. If only his name was written in all the same characters of gold and vault. He lets us call him Goldsmith or something. But if he let us call him Goldsmith or something, that'd be totally awesome! As you can probably gather from, from all the talk about him, he's a frightening person with an extremely short temper. But I'm just his grandkid. I haven't met him since I was in elementary school six years ago. I don't remember even having been, been beaten by him, but it seems that our parents were raised with an iron fist. That earlier conversation between my dad and Uncle Krauss. I should, go, I should go try to convince Grandfather to come out. It seems oddly funny if you take this into account. In order to tell Grandfather's story, you have to take, you have to take yourself way back to, to before the Showa era, 1926 to 1989, to recount the tale of the Ashermia family. Until the Meiji, 1868 to 1912, and Taisho eras, 1912 to 1962, the Ashimi family was great and prosperous. They owned, several, they owned several spinning mills and were, were very wealthy people who merely had to fall about laughing while the money rolled in. And incidentally, Grandfather, as a member of the Branch family, originally had nothing to do with the, with the main family. Instantly separated from the house's inheritance, he apparently had very little involvement with the head house. However, during the great Kanto earthquake in 1923, the mansion owned by the Ashirmi family, Ashirmi main family in Odawara, was flattened. 
The spinning mills in Tokyo were all burned down in a huge fire. The Ishimiya family lost most of its wealth and family members in an instant. It then became a matter of who would become the heir to the main family. As it turned out, none were left except for Kinzo, who was as far removed from the main family line as they come. Kinzo himself later said that it was such a good it was such good luck. It was all it was as though uh, fate itself had been turned upside down. With that, grandfather's ordin ordinary life did a 180. It's just with reviving the wealth that the, that the dying Yoshimiya family had almost completely lost. Of course, just because you suddenly dump a task on someone doesn't mean they can do it. They can do squat to accomplish it. I doubt the people around him were expecting much. But this is where Grandfather began to display his extraordinary talent and good luck. Grandfather used all the family funds and everything from the ha from the hair on his head to his toenails as collateral to borrow a massive amount of money. He had a gigantic stockpile of funds and immediately started a business. It was like tumbling down a hill with a bike without any brakes. And then jumping onto a neighboring bike and then another one. Some crazy street performance. Probably anyone would have thought that Grandfather had no business, who had no business ability. But with an unbelievable amount of gold, an unbelievable amount of good luck and miracles, with coincidences piling up and every chance taken advantage of, before anyone knew it, he had forged powerful connections with the Allied forces. At the time, Mac MacArthur and the GHQ were in charge of Japan. Grandfather, in the twinkle of an eye, began succeeding in business under the pr protection of the occupying forces, quickly becoming very rich. At this point, it was no longer luck, but information that won the day. He must have made some seriously thick connections with the occupying forces. Grandfather knew about the emergency demands uh, that, would be, that would be made for the Korean War before they happened. No, more than that. He must have foreseen this very sp these uh, special procurements and started penetrating those markets from the very beginning. History textbooks say that all of Japan made a large profit on the emergency demands of the Korean War, but that wasn't the case in reality. Only a very limited number of the super rich played, played the money game and made an easy profit. Most of the citizens were made poor, too. In other words, Grandfather was, extreme, was an extremely lucky member of this group of winners. This all happened during the year 1950, I think. And since the year of the Great Kanto Earthquake was 1923. This means that Grandfather was able to receive the near dead of Shirmia family, a level even higher than it had been before, in the span of only 20 to 30 years. With that, he think he, that he would revive the main family in Odawara. But for some reason, he went into something crazy as buying an entire small island in the Izu Archipelago. Buying an entire island is not something that you can ordinarily do today. However, Grandfather was clever. He, conducted, he contacted the GHQ and applied for the, established, the establishment of a marine resource base. By the island as a business pr business property, and then regained, uh, reneged on it and claimed that it, claimed it as, as his own plot of land. After the war, there were prevention prevention measures against food shortages, and furthermore, he had a sponsorship of the GHQ, which meant that nobody could oppose him. The Tokyo provided the land for the ne for the next to no money at the time. Tokyo ma later made uh, repeated complaints to, for the land to be returned, but not much could be done due to the involvement of the GHQ even though they'd been pushed into it. No doubt he'd bribed everyone there was to bribe. In the end, the city gave up in frustration. Grandfather, with considerable skill and blessed with good luck, managed to weather the stormy seas of that period, obtaining a vast fortune in his own island. Of course, it wasn't all luck. He was skilled with English, and this was cultivated by his western obsession. It was by using that as a weapon that he was able to make in inroads in the GHQ. A mansion was immediately built on the island. That would be his mansion. Grandfather, who had always loved the West, made this once uninhabited island, Rokenjima, a canvas upon which he could realize his dreams to his heart's content. The Western mansion that he had already always imagined, overflowing with emotion, a beautiful garden with various roses had been planted. In a private beach where no one other than himself would ever be permitted to leave a footprint. To have this much would be every man's dream. After that, making good use of his huge fortune, they became a large stockholder in the, in the extremely stable iron and steel industry, and they live an easy and comfortable life just using the dividends. Well, he's just that incredible. 
This kind of person normally gets portrayed after the fact as having the ability to foresee and predict the future or something. The grandfather denies all that. Repeatedly saying he was, he was simply blessed with extraordinary luck. Anyway, he would lowered like that with all of his dreams made real. Can't help but grow increasingly odd with, when locked up on an island. Everyone knows that he's been obsessed with the West for a very long time. None of our parents really knows what his bizarre black magic hobby began. Perhaps his love of black magic began uh, way back when he became fascinated with the West. Or, possibly, his miraculous stretch of good luck, which allowed him to reserve, revive the family, caused him to feel a mysterious power in himself. At some point, Grandfather began to make the research of black magic his life's work. Filling his study with, suspi filling his study with suspicious books, chemicals, and magical items, he, be he became increasingly bizarre. These being the few remaining years of a person successful in life, those around him warmly watched over him. Feeling the time uh, was his to spend as he pleased. Or so I hear. But... No way in hell that's true. You're probably just driven away thinking that... Thinking that's disturbing. I don't want to get involved. Well, that war-torn period was a time for big gambles. With both opportunities and risks. What's your grandfather do so well if he'd been born in this time period? He would have had no opportunities, and probably have advanced like a chess piece from mandatory education to college at a leisurely pace. Never becoming more than an average company employee. If that had happened, he'd probably be sitting here with the rest of us, regaling us with his tales of his shitty boss. No, not here, in the dining hall of a mansion. Might have been on the table in some bar. If that were the case, I'm sure that this would have been a much more comfortable family conference. Alright, that's enough t that's enough to talk about the old geezer who won't pop off. More importantly, let's talk about this incredible lunch. <laughs> I was already sold by the, the sashimi salad. Yoda-san is one hell of a chef. Plus, these fish were caught in the oceans near here, weren't they? The sashimi you get at the supermarket doesn't even come close. Hey, quit it, Babla. Your upbringing will be exposed. Sashimi salad? Everyone let out a big laugh. Damn it. So that even though you love the, you love the cheap pubs, you love, you love these cheap pubs. Meh. <laughs> My job occasionally leads me to eat at some quite interesting places, but even compared to those, this is an excellent dish. I imagine you could have become reasonably well known in that field, Godasan. The second I have to blow my nose. Understandable. Have a good day. Also, if you buy an island, can't you name it whatever? Oh man, I'm gonna well, fail that test super hard. For it. <laughs> island is a whole face. different yeah. set for that. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, like, right now. like, oh yeah, let's go. I don't know about it much. I don't know too much about it, but. The famous hotel where he used to work employee politics got pretty complicated and everyone split into factions. In the middle of all that, he apparently was forced to retire. And it just so happened that mom had job offers for a servant out at the same time. As go to clear the, cleared away the empty plates, he began to recount his, old, his own eventful past, never losing his smile. The world is a difficult place. However, thanks to this, that I was given a chance to display my skills as a chef once again. This time for the Ashurmia family. I have to ask, is this like voice of reference to something, or is it just... No, I just want to give... I just, he's just, he's I just, just doing his I just want to give him a fucking, part. like, big, rampunctious, like, posh servant voice. Mm. It also fits yeah, in super no, well. Like the guy from the just the voice. Excuse me, I had a... Oh, I mean, not. Like, although I also enjoy the smiles of a larger number of people, it's also extremely entertaining to be able to perform delicate work in order to please so the limited number of people I have pledged to serve. All of this is thanks to the opportunity given to me by Madam. Yoda's unexpectedly bowed on t his head to towards that Nazi. That is because among all of the applicants, you were the most talented. The decision was not based on personal feelings, but purely objective, so there is no need to thank me. 
Oh man. Why does that Nazi always have to speak so frankly? When she spoke more gently, she might give off a different impression. Jen and Chan and Kumasawa-san entered from the hallway with a servant cart. Please excuse us. Now then, let us move on to today's dessert. The other one on the other is laid out the beautifully adorned dessert. It's true what they, uh, when they say you, you, you have another stomach for desserts. But that being fed all this delicious food it totally filled me up. As soon as I laid eyes on the dessert, my stomach started yelling more! I don't know much about desserts, but this looks really good. My white pudding like substance was garnished with two shades of red sauce. And elegant rose petals adorned the, adorn the dish. When you dine on such magnificent foods as this, first there's a, it is distributed in front of everybody, and the chef takes a moment to extol the virtues of, of his creation. Until he finished, as a, until he has finished, as a rule, you don't touch the food. However, Maria, who had no experience with these ceremonial rule, ceremonious rules, was excited by the beautiful and delicious looking, delicious looking desserts and jumped to the fray as soon as he it was placed in before her. Minima. Auntie Rosa scolded her, calling it bad manners. But George responded by saying, Now, now, it's alright. Uh? This one's sour! This one's sour! Pardon, <coughs> Zach. Bye. <laughs> that one! The wrong one is this one! Mary exclaimed as, she ex exclaimed as she sampled the two color sauces. What? There's the right one and the wrong one. All right, I'll give it a go. Mmm. Apparently, two sauces were, were one sweet and one sour. Despite being bad members, despite it being bad manners, I was stung my little. I also stuck my little finger on it and licked it. Whoa. One of them was sour enough to make you pucker up. For yellow, I'd have expected, I'd have expected lemon. But I couldn't guess what kind of salt, uh, sourness would be red. I decided, I decided to ask Shannon who was putting away the serving cart behind us. Shannon, Shannon, what kind of sauce is this sour stuff? Um, uh, uh. Shannon, Shannon hesitated to speak. And she was just sitting at the table and didn't really know. I think hesitating a bit much for that, though. Did I ask something wrong? Using that they were, the the using that, I, that we were better off not knowing about. But not while Nazi acted as though she had a headache, Kumasawa-san, who was sitting on the other side of the table, began to laugh with an "Oh ho ho ho!" Kelly, you're muted, by the way. Kelly, you. Uh, Kelly, you're Kelly. Muted. Oh, yep. Sorry about the mute. What do you think we made it out of? Oh, oh, it'll shock you. What? Period blood? Huh? Uh, uh, I don't have a clue. And Kumasawa Bachan, that laugh creeps you the hell out. So, what is it? Don't tell anyone, alright? Let me borrow your ears. Kumasawa-san leaned across from the other side of the table. Best to borrow my ears, so I listen forward. I lean forward, too. Yeah. Their interest caught, Jessica, George, and Anaki, George Anaki, and of course, Maria, also put their ears closer. Oh. Hey. Hey. Tell me! Tell me! So part is well. Actually, it's squeezed juice from a mackerel. <laughs> what? This is this is like all the cousins at once. So I mean, what? What? Mackerel? What? mackerel? Nani? Oh god, that's gross. Mackerel. Don't be ridiculous. We all thought, horrified. Only Marie accepted it, nodding with an uh huh. Uh. What? Mackerels are sour. If you squeeze them, this comes out. <laughs> this is all the cousins going. 
Uh, Maria never say that out loud to anybody else. When Maria started clamoring that mackerels and mackerels were sour, they also were unable to contain their laughter. Oh, that's the adults, too. <laughs> You've got it wrong. That's vine. It's vinaigred mackerel. Auntie Rosa said to Maria in a small voice while turning red. Ah, and I remember it perfectly. Kimasama san was always this kind of character, wasn't she? She remembered her tricking, her tricking me about all kinds of things when I was y as young as well. Among all of them, the most painful one must have been that one. The flimsy black stuff you caught and you get in Chinese food. The karage mushrooms. Tell me it was penguin meat and I went all, all around the school like a smartass telling everyone, didn't I? <laughs> Kumasawa Bachan, you sure haven't changed. <laughs> Even Maria's gonna believe now, right? Kelly. We need oh, to get them. Oh, it's just a joke. Kodasan will tell you what the sauce is in just a moment. <laughs> Kodasan looked a little put off for having his masterpiece laughed at in such a way. After clearing his throat once, he, he introduced the desserts to us. <clears throat> well then, hello to describe tonight's dessert. Based on the rose garden that everyone seemed to enjoy so much today, I finished the pina cotta in a rose garden style. The rose petals scattered over cross were selected just now from that rose garden. For the sauces, I prepared two different reds for you. Strawberry and rose hip. Please enjoy the strawberry sweetness and the rose hip sourness in turn. Rose hip. Finally, the rose petals are a decoration, so please set them aside before eating. With that said, please enjoy. Huh. Man, I also want to applaud before I've even eaten it. It's like when you take medicine, you know? It needs to work better when you read the instructions. Thanks to Goda's on elaborating on the details of the dessert. I feel like he's knocked it up another notch. By the way, Bettler, holy shit, is that real? <laughs> no, when I was a kid, that was a superstition. If you read the instructions, you'll get better sooner. Hmm. Seriously, you call him meticulous, just talented. It was probably planned from the beginning, but he took a cue from our from our stopping in front of the rose garden earlier today. Oh, rose hips have vitamin C. He displayed an incredibly, incredibly timely awareness of the season just by adding a few rose petals from this from that garden. This combination of sweet and sour was also exquisite. If it was just sweet, you'd get used to it and become bored halfway through. But by bringing in the sour sauce at that point, you get a really vivid taste. The sour sauce for geese. <laughs> and then, once, in return, once you return into the sweet sauce, all the sourness you're in your mouth is replaced with an enjoyable sweetness again. For everyone else felt the same way. Every time Goto-san passed by one of the seats, someone praised the taste in his creation. How is it, madam? Blended, as always. It is a worthy treat for our guest. Fuck, I'm gonna yawn. <gasps> I am most grateful for your words. Madam, did you know? For the, the, the rose hip has the ability to cure headaches. I thought you especially would appreciate it, but I had specially prepared! Is that so? Thank you. See, didn't I tell you, Natsuhide-san? Rose Hip works on headaches! So it seems. I can only hope it has some effect. Wow! Yoda san I love you. Hey, later. Whisper me how much compensation you're getting for this, won't ya? If you sworn to silence, you can stick up some fingers instead. Let me know your price. <laughs> Having your talent monopolized by this small island is sacrilege to humanity's cooking culture. Word. Wouldn't you be willing to display your talent to the customers at my company? <laughs> Hideyoshi-san, are you trying to recruit our Goda? How troubling. 
We'd better make some improvements to his salary or he'll get snatched away. <laughs> yes, you really should. If you don't, he'll be lured away and you'll be stuck with three meals a day of Kumasawa-style mackerel cooking, won't you? Yeah, I see it. Oh, 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 that is indeed harsh. It seems someone's holding a grudge. Uh, all, everybody who has a bicycle. Ah! <laughs> 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 Everyone let out a huge laugh. Even Jessica, Kumasawa-san's mackerel director, a type of running gag. My parents had long since gotten used to it. Kumasawa-san often claimed that mackerel contained precious nutrients that could do things such as prevent aging and make people smarter. Seems that while it couldn't have stopped the outward signs of aging, it was preventing aging on the inside. Since she was still healthy enough to tell us these kinds of jokes at her age, that benefit must be the real thing. Oh, oh, oh. Well then, if you excuse me. Tell yourself a tonight's dinner. It totally doesn't have liver in it. I'll be cooking plenty <laughs> of mackerel dishes for you to eat. I look forward to it. <laughs> we sure will. <laughs> I want to treat myself to some vinegar mackerel tonight. That sounds wonderful. I wonder if any delicious Japanese sake will be included. Oh, wait, then. Hmm? Yeah. Oh, it certainly will. <laughs> How about some of our famous Rokijima mackerel liquor? Everyone with a voice <laughs> roll. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember inviting Wario to the island. <laughs> I'm here too. Well, this is awesome. literally wah ha 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 ha. What else are you gonna do? Uh, <laughs> with everyone to come a on together with Shannon Shan, bad and pushed the serving cart away. Amusingly, Goda san, who looked just as though he was, his stock had been stolen from him, and very seriously that tonight's dinner would actually be calf steak. Um, Kumasawa san, thank you for doing that back there. As she pushed the serving cart, Shannon bowed her head very deeply. Oh, ho, ho, I haven't done anything that requires thanks. Kimasawa played dumb, but it was no accident that she had thrown Shannon a lifeline. Back when Ballard asked for the details of the dessert, Shannon unfortunately hesitated. There may have been several ways to dodge the question, but all of them should have been delivered deftly. Shannon, who hesitated when, ha when hard pressed for a response, was suffering because of that of this small weakness. If only Shannon, like Goda, a little of the craftiness needed to skillfully shake off a mistake. Your days would be, would be a little more comfortable. This weakness is especially unfortunate considering how flawlessly she could handle her work. Of course, there were those who, were, who well understood Shan's neck, meek nature and her inability to remember the, to gloss over her mistakes. She does have a thin neck. Which is why Kumasawa came to her aid without hesitation. I just heard from Genji-san that there's been a change to the afternoon shifts. I believe you were given a break until this evening. Oh, oh, oh I am jealous. I can stop randomly enunciating words if that's getting annoying. No, you're fine. Go ahead. Oh, I like it. Get down to the character. Okay. Go nuts. Oh, right, sure. I'm sorry. I haven't checked the list of shifts yet. Mm -mm. Ah, yes. I was thinking I might start cooking some macro in the oven. If you don't mind, I would be happy if you would help out a bit before your break. Ah, uh, yes. I would be delighted to help.
Shannon, Kumasai was like a mother among the servants. We did it! Oh. <laughs> Honestly. Orange. Just give me a sec. <laughs> Alright, there we go. The dining hall needed to be cleaned up so we were chased out. Instead, tea would be served up in, served in the parlor. You would be preparing the black tea that Auntie Rosa had brought for Aunt Nancy. Marie insisted that she would also want to drink the black tea, but was direct, rejected by the old bastard. Although the rest of us kids had to go play outside. Tyler, Ken, why don't we go out? All go out for a walk outside. <laughs> oh. Go look for the roses or something. Yeah, but keep a close eye on the weather. The sky's still clear, but the weather reports keep talking about rain. Oh, isn't that a wonderful idea? Playing on a sandy beach isn't something that you get to do often, is it? I guess not! Alright, let's go to the sandy beach then! Arr! Let's go! Let's go! Maria, be careful not to get your clothes wet. Your shoes, too. Why are you going to the beach if you don't get wet? So obedient and cute. Badlerkun, make sure you keep an eye out for Maria Chan, okay? Sure thing. Leave it to me. Oh, you're pretty cute and obedient too when Kyrie asks you something, huh? Gonna need you to never say that again, old man. Why don't you try listening to me obediently for a change? Heh! <laughs> Hell no! Let's go, everyone! Come on! Children flew out of the parlor. They were replaced by Genji, who pushed a serving card in and prepared the black tea. The parlor filled with a sublime aroma which en entertained everyone while they, while they waited to uh, appease their thirst. <laughs> Rudolph, you and your family all seem to get along so well with each other. Good for you. Oh, please. You have us beat on that front. So oh, true. Jessica Chan really has grown into an innocent little thing, hasn't she? It's all the fruit of your training, isn't it, Nancy? He's made some up. Thank you. Nazi answered coldly. With that, the conversation halted and the parlor became silent. Possibly because he couldn't stand it anymore. Oh, Hideyoshi, sorry, broke... Hideyoshi broke the silence while performing an exaggerated gesture. Still, they sure do grow fast. I thought they'd be kids forever, but they've been getting huge right before my eyes. And before I knew it, they've joined the ranks of us adults. Batlington, for one, is beyond recognition. Chelly, how the fuck do you know those lyrics? <clears throat> you underestimate <throat> the times that uh, I listened to that song as a guilty pleasure. Eh, eh, what the hell? I listen to ICP. How do the magnets work? I don't know. Miracles. He's still my homies. Here he His body has gotten much bigger, but he is still a child. Well, my husband is still a child as well. I wonder where the border between child and adult is. Ugh. I still don't feel as though I've grown up. <sighs> Isn't that pitiful? 
That's not something the mother of a child should say. Shut the fuck up. That's right. We're not children anymore. We are all adults. <laughs> so I would like it if we could all hold an intellectual discussion without becoming emotional. Is that so hard? Yes, as we all know, adults are all dead inside. Neva smiled with that sharp sarcasm. Everything seemed to get more tense. Look, like the smell of tea at the time that had been prepared so carefully just flew out the window. We have always strived to hold intellectual discussions. Your sarcasm is ill-placed sometimes. You have never changed in that respect. Always strived, is it? My, my. I wish I could wrap those words up and send them to this room a few decades ago. Hey, uh, Noir, can you use your Krauss voice and say the super baby method? <laughs> The super baby method. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Somebody clip that. That's awesome. Snake, did you like my sunglasses? <laughs> what, what is this a reference? It's not over yet. It's a reference to Metal Gear Solid. He sounds like Liquid Snake. Metal Gear. Oh, he does. Anyways, here we go. Uh, there's a little bit extra at the end, Con. Con? 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 Con, Con. Con, Con. Con! Ah! <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had to oh, do it, I'm sorry. <laughs> My man out here doing the fucking. Uh, it sounded like you were doing the, uh, uh, the what is it? Um, the, the, the yelling voice of the kamikazes from fucking Serious Sam. <laughs> Oh, oh, he's yeah. doing ah! Shatner. Oh, Jesus Christ, Nord. Somebody just posted, like, a liquid snake explaining Big Chungus, and God, Nord does sound like liquid snake. <laughs> you see, it's just a fat bug's bunny, brother. Don, are you there? Don? Hello? <laughs> Joshi, no! Joshi, no! Oh, no, Jesus. not the long neck! Person. It's Persona, it's Persona, Shannon. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not Persona, it's Shannon! It's Persona, it's specifically Persona. <laughs> no, you need Persona, you bet. <laughs> Fucking hell. Nope. He's a giraffe. Hey, listen, my voice acting isn't that great compared to everyone else's, but my shit posts are great. Hey, you're yeah. fine, Joshy. You're fine. Everything's fine. Hey, don't sell yourself short, Joshy. Don't sell yourself short, Joshy. <laughs> now it's rhyme time. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why are we posting Persona 3 and 4 characters? Because they got long they got necks, necks like I did to Shannon. Look at that neck, man. Look at the neck. What? Do you think Khan had to do something real quick? I uh, imagine. Mm. Can't believe Khan the shit out her whole ass. God damn it. <laughs> Why? Why not? And I thought I was getting her cyborg parts replaced again. Or she's just blowing her nose, maybe. She's just gonna come she's gonna come in and be like, You're all gonna die tonight. <laughs> Two boys gonna die tonight <laughs> Kids gonna die tonight. Anyway. What? Uh, what? Uh uh. uh. As uh, as I said, when we get to the next chapter break, uh, I might need the restroom at the chapter break. I mean, we're probably gonna be we're getting pretty close to the to the end. Of Damn, the game. no can in this chapter. Fuck. Sadly, no. I was I was worried I wasn't gonna get any Hideyoshi. Plenty of George. Yeah. Zaz, why did you send me that message just saying bruh? I'm assuming because of the neck. <laughs> oh no, this is uh something else. Oh. Uh. Oh. Uh. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure. Oh, wait, there's no poor horny posting during stream. Uh, you there account. is That's not. Right. It is blocked. So don't do, don't do it. Don't okay. do it. Don't you do it. I mean, you can still go in there, can't you? Or is that locked to admin now? No, it, it's, it is it's... specifically locked. Orange, can I get a reading on of this? On purpose. 
and yeah, what voice? Me, did you drink me a sandwich? No. Did we plan to like do that joke with that exa- with those exact two characters? Yeah, we did. Well, originally you and me decided on uh, what was it? We didn't decide on you. And I I posed a. Genji oh yeah, and orange Kinzo. was gone. That was like me. Yeah, and I posed original. Kinzo and Genji, but then you rightfully said that like Genji would actually just do it anyway. <laughs> you yeah. wouldn't say no. Yeah. I'm really dig- <laughs> she, be- she picked a real fucking time to leave. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, man. Con, you sure you're good? You okay, Con? Uh, I I don't think she's there. She couldn't handle- I, I hope she's okay. replaced by her dog. She couldn't handle the super baby method. Are you okay, Con? Like, legitimately. Uh, maybe the bike I'm, isn't gu- I'm guessing that, like, so- I'm guessing that, like, doing something right now. Okay. Either she's doing something or her bike got turned off. I I think I also uh, ping. I mean, uh, pinged her saying how to turn on streaming mode. So I'm not sure if she's even getting our pings. Oh well. Right, Rosa. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did hear. uh, I heard pings in her mic when she was talking earlier. In the meantime, I will simply post some artwork in in certain places. You want to put on the intermission screen? Uh... Welcome to intermission. The battler cube? Yeah, here, I guess. Wait, if that's the case, I can use the restroom. Yeah, I, I gotta go wash something. I'll be, I'll be... I'm also gonna go piss. Make uh, enjoy, piss. enjoy the sounds of clockwork in the meantime. Huh. Are we muted? I mean, it's like, if, you know, if people are, like, talking over her and she needs to, like, tell us something, then maybe it would probably would have been a, a better idea to just be, like, uh, to type in chat real quick. I gotta go do something. Be right back. Sorry. Well, we don't I'm know back. if it was, like, okay. Oh, oh, okay, we were worried. Yeah. Sorry about that. My dad oh. asked me to pick up dog poo. Oh. Okay. Oh. Uh, well, we're gonna, we're gonna wait just a moment because some people left to go do something. They went, uh, AC went to go use the bathroom, so. Uh, Did I miss too. anything? Uh no, you just need, you just need to say right, Rosa. Uh, whenever we start back up. Well, sorry about that. Mm. It's fine. My first instinct is always to turn my mic off whenever my people just come in the room. Say oh, we're not me muted. Next time in chat. I I I can't believe uh uh uh, uh I was gonna I was I gonna describe the thing that I got What's sent, but I don't want to expose sorry. anyone. Hey, it's Con's fun. back. You're kind of, you're fine, Con. You're Con fine. What? I don't know. Oh, I'm back. All right, is everybody back? I think everyone's back. Uh, can I come back? A moment. Yeah. Yeah. What's happening? Sorry about that. My dad had to ask me to pick up some dog poo. Poopy. Oh, fun. Poopy butt. Because I'm the only person in my house who can tolerate the smell and the texture. Oh, God. AC still well. Is AC have Don't a bit here? like that? I mean, it's. It, I mean, it's. What else? Why, is, why did you call AC C, CJ? Why do you think? Why? How could you do this? Why would you go with his bit? <laughs> I can't believe this. What is done bit? This. Besides, oh, it was diarrhea dog poo. So no, he no, no, no. AC's, oh. bit, AC's bit where he's now CJ. I am back. <laughs> I'm back. Uh, First he was Norman Reedus, now he's CJ. But... What's next, Is someone Cheryl? trying to look in horny again? No. 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 Aren't they always? That's not what the Twitch stream is saying. SDB posted it. No, I got sent something horny. Anyway, can so... The, uh, can the audience even hear us right now? Yes. Yeah. Yes, they can, can hear, hear every word we're saying. I wonder what Rosa thinks. Yeah, right, what's Rosa? Rosa? <sighs> Rosa smiled with a vague expression. Whether she agreed or disagreed, she knew that she would, she would earn the displeasure of, of, her, of either her brother or her sister. A bit of a worldly wisdom that she had needed to learn as the youngest sibling. Oh, quit it, Aniki. We should enter into the main topic while the brats aren't around, right? Let us make that our intellectual discussion. As Rudolph glanced over the faces of all present, some let out a slight sigh and some let let a small look of resignation cross their face. This was unavoidable. 
This is the unavoidable true agenda. Ooh. Last year, his life expectancy was estimated at about three months. Which means he's already at minus nine. The Grim Reaper could come flying through the window in a blind pan. At any moment. At any moment. Yeah. Natsui? Sorry, I took a drink. The family head is still in good health. Raising such an inappropriate topic while the sun is still bright. I must question whether you are in your right mind, Rudolph son. Still, Natsui san. If we don't discuss this until something happens, it'll be too late. He's still healthy now, but we gotta figure out something while we still have some time left over. Oops. It's a kind of financial etiquette. It seems as though everyone is concerned about Father. Dr. Nanjo? Could we hear the details from you? It seems as though they are also hoping for that. <coughs> Nanjo, standing by the window and staring out of the rose garden, had a single cough and he realized that he was being called. Dr. Nanjo. Why is it... No, I didn't even open that. No, go away. How is Father's condition? Well, first... My estimate last year that he only had three months to live still appears to be making presents each present fit. So allow me to start by correcting it. Sorry, moved my soda away from my laptop because that was a bad idea. No need to explain. You're saying that measuring remaining life is only a prediction, not a promise, right? That's correct. Oh, Jesus. Uh, that is correct. correct. The audio right now. Uh, I think it'll uh, even out. Because of that, I can offer no definitive answers to that question. Are uh, you all uh, blah. Uh, running out, bruh? You all so often ask me, of when he will pass away. A human's life is supported by their body and mind. If that body is weak, the situation becomes more dangerous. But if the mind is strong enough to compensate for the weakness, it is possible to maintain a state of remission. So you're saying that even if his body is weak, his mind is still firm and spirited. Kyrie, sorry, but please stay quiet for a while. I don't know about this 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 fucking PNG of Rudolph. It looks like he it reminds me of that one meme of that woman throwing a flashbang at you. <laughs> it looks like a he looks like oh, he's throwing a flashbang. No 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 you know what it is? It's whoa, play uh plague upon you and he's fucking throwing a rat at you like M, &M. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, somebody has to Photoshop Eminem's head under Rudolph's body now. Also, using Callie is actually pretty funny. Just gonna say. Mm. <laughs> All right. Woof, that's good. Sorry, bastard. That is correct. Kinzo-san's body has been ravaged by disease. With him continuing to protect in that kind of strong liquid liquor, on top of all that, I really must think. So booze is the reason he's teetering on the edge. And booze is also the reason he's hanging on. Sounds like Dad, the heavy drinker. Well then, Doctor, I know you can't give anything more than a prediction. 
But what do you think about father's chances of living until this day next year? That is quite the rude question to ask about the head. Nazi jumped on Ava, unable to hide her astonished expression. In response, Ava returned a defiant look. Hideyoshi noticed and tried to smooth things out with a forced smile. Ah, Natsui san, forgive her. Ever try, wait, Eva, try and choose your words a bit more carefully, alright? I'm sorry. I was just so concerned over father's condition. <laughs> Is that so? I hadn't realized. Dr. Nonjo, please tell us. For the sake of the beautiful family love of a daughter worried about her father's lifespan. There's no other intentional origin or any other kind of emotional manipulation going on that's sinister that makes me want to violently throw up my lunch. <laughs> Cross, is la Cross laughed sarcastically. And Ava, smiling sweetly, returned an identical chuckle. You ask whether he will still be healthy next year. But it's a very difficult question for me as a doctor. Well, I do think this remission will last for a while yet. If he suffers some kind of fit, there may be nothing we can do. After all, Rokenjima is a solitary island. It is not as though an ambulance can come rushing to save him. Normally, I would want to have him hospitalized in a large hospital on the mainland, but... Father stated he doesn't want his noble research interrupted. It seems he holds a grudge over the way we tried to force him out last year. Apparently, he strongly suspects that he'll be shut away in some hospital if he goes outside. And that's how things are now. Has Dr. Nanjo been examining him? Father trusts Dr. Nanjo. It seems he can be examined when in a good mood. I can examine his condition, but if I try to recommend medicine or a hospitalization, he refuses to listen. I've really only been able to look. Reminds me of my dad. It's true that there are people that hate doctors. <laughs> Still, what a hassle. <coughs> Nanjo sighed deeply. The purpose of an examination was to determine what medical treatment was appropriate. <coughs> Receiving an examination and then not following that adv the advice given <coughs> made the whole thing pointless. Then in summary, his expected life is still three months. And there's no way to guess how long he'll continue to live while still on the verge of death. Rudolph, son. Couldn't you be more discreet with your words? Ah, sorry. I've always talked this way. Cut me a break. I understand Dr. Nanjo's opinion. What do you think, Kraus Nissan? Hmm. To be perfectly honest, I have to disagree with Dr. Nonjo. I find it truly difficult to think of Father as a person so sick that he has only three months to live. His yell is as healthy as ever, and I still get the chills at the thought of his fists raining down on me. Pushing the task of caring for Dad solely on the shoulders of the eldest son is far from fair. Ha ha ha! 
in the next world be born after me. All right, let's return to our discussion. In that case, according to the impartial and neutral doctor's opinion, it wouldn't be odd for him to go any time. Sorry, Anarchy, but I'd rather trust the opinion of a specialist. With that, I believe the discussion of Dad's fortune is no longer a premature topic. Father's personal funds probably reach into the tens of billions of yen, right? E déjà. But it's not as though all of that is neatly gathered as ready cash. It's not as simple as neatly cutting a birthday cake with the knife. Interesting metaphor, Nike. That's right. Sometimes strawberries or chocolates are placed on top of the cake, making it hard to cleanly divide it into equal parts. Taking that into consideration, I think it's important to first discuss how best to stick the knife in, don't you? I truly don't understand you all. Even while the head is still alive, you're discussing the matter in loud voices as though he were already dead. Come now, don't you see how important this is? After all, when the time comes, the inheritance of his fortune must be carried out immediately, right? Moreover, the wealth of the glorious Urushimu Ushiromiya house is vast. Don't you understand that a careful discussion is necessary beforehand? There's a huge difference between the assets of this family and your old one. How rude. The family I was born into has nothing to do with this. As Nancy resentfully responded in a low voice, the already dark atmosphere grew even more hostile. Give it a rest, Eva. Wait, is it Eva or Eva? Eva, Eva. 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 Not my son. Forgive Eva. us. Pardon her rudeness. Oh, the good news. Hideyoshi tried to smooth things over by glancing at both with a forced smile. That resulted in making the hostility between Eva and Natsuhi more intense. No fight! It's, it's, well, well I'm, I need to get out of Hideyoshi voice. It's time, it seems that I would just be in the way if I stay any longer. Please excuse me. Nanja rose from his seat and exi exited the parlor. May well have been a normal act of courtesy expected of an outsider, but even so, his back was watched but by several glances, envious of his ability to escape. After the doctor had exited and his footsteps had disappeared into the distance, Kraus recrossed his legs. So let me see if I understand your point of view correctly. Father's remaining life is short. You want to quickly enter into a practical conference concerning the distribution of the inheritance. Why are you so eager, I wonder? Certainly, as you say, estimating and distributing the Oshiromiya family's wealth is no simple task. In that case, shouldn't we carefully and deliberately calculate? It seems to me that you're all impatient to split up the cake tonight. That's true, isn't it, Rosa? Is something making you impatient? It's not that we're impatient. But a decision between siblings is essential. It doesn't matter when. But if father's condition is worsening and the day is drawing near... 
Discussing the matter beforehand isn't what I would call impatient. I was a sneak a glance at Ava and Rudolph. As the youngest daughter in the family, being cross-examined by the eldest was harsh. Oh. Is that your true opinion? I didn't expect that the most honest and pure-hearted of the siblings would say something like that. I wonder if those two told you to say that. <clears throat> Quit it, Anarchy. Rosa is a sibling just like the rest of us. She has a fair right to Dad's inheritance. It's obvious she would be interested, right? After all, Dad'll definitely die, and that's not something that'll happen in the distant future. On the contrary, Anki, you're far too relaxed. It seems almost as though you would like nothing better than to turn the discussion away from the distribution of the inheritance. What do you mean by that? Are you trying to accuse my husband of something? Calm down, Natsui son. Listen to what we have to say. Nissan, I hear these are good times nowadays. That's right, since last year the yen has just been going up and up thanks to the unprecedented boom in prosperity. It seems that it's no longer a dream that the dollar will reach 100 yen. Also, the ruling party says that it will establish a health resort maintenance law by next year. <laughs> At this moment, resort development companies across Japan are running about trying to gather as much capital as they can. <laughs> you know your stuff. <laughs> Ellie. Soon, Japan will see an unprecedented boom. Just like when Father revived the Ushiramiya family, another case like the Korean War demands. The people of Japan have worked at a frenzied pace, realized vast economic growth, and become the most prosperous people in the world. They're enjoying the height of their prosperity. Private spending has increased, and institutions that can profit from that can make easy money in this era. The people's needs are no longer merely the essential three electrical appliances. Places to ski, to golf, public pools, resort hotels and theme parks. Have you gone to Delsneyland, which opened just a few years <laughs> ago? <laughs> what? <laughs> Delsneyland! Delsneyland, <laughs> let's go! I'm going to Delsneyland! We have Mulky Mouth and Doofy Doo and Dunder. <laughs> if there's no Mulky, this shit ain't Delsney! <laughs> there we go, there we go! <laughs> Yeah, man, I really hated when the moose bought the Star Wars. It's oh man, I'm trying to think of a play of words for Star Wars. <laughs> Let's not forget about uh, Donald Duke's uh, girlfriend Darsley. BT Dubs do not look up Delsney Land. Why not? You get nothing but Umi spoilers. Oh great! Holy shit. Remember, I, we, I tried searching it up. I thought remember, it would be something else. We will tell you what to look up. <laughs> Didn't know where you'd get spoilers. <laughs> Mini pick. Man, it what an excellent not theme good. park that oh, is. Oh, that's a super spoiler. Fuck. <laughs> Alright, here. I'm going to Disney World. In that I'm place, going to Elevator the... Land. Escalator Land. Escalator land. Sorry. <laughs> in that place, even an adult can be a kid and have fun with his family. Kraus, isn't that a uh, chalk or uh, a chalky cheese cheddar? Toys? 
Chunky toys. Chunky toys. Chunky era Chunky. where the virtue was to selflessly devote yourself to your country while failing to consider your family is ending. Imagine a discussion between uh, Kraus and Rudolph where Rudolph is like, ah, yeah, chunky cheeses, uh, that, that eater. <laughs> No, Rudolph, you understand. <laughs> Chunky Cheese is an entertainment center. <laughs> I heard oh, God. Hey, Fazbear's right, locations right. are getting good. Uh, now, as the most prosperous people in the world, we can finally accept that. Cross me, son. Your foresight is something else. When I heard this several years ago, I thought it was ridiculous. But see, when I heard about the G5 Nations Plaza Accord, that changed. The yen's getting stronger and stronger, and the price of land will skyrocket soon, I bet. The day that Japan becomes an economic center of the world isn't far off. You, ju you have to be very forward-looking. You have to have a very forward-looking view. There's no mistake in that, at, that at least. I feel the same as Hideyoshi Nissan. Anarchy, you can read into the next le decade of history. I might need a second, my dog just threw up. Understandable, we oh. can take a brief break. Yeah. Uh, never yeah, cool yeah. when a dog throws up, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or my dog enough. has that problem too. He'll just drink too much water real quick, and then I'll throw it up. It's disgusting. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, also yeah. hey, random funny shit aside, did you guys see that fucking that, that Pokemon-esque game that got announced recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. Pokemon? What the hell is that? The hell is that? Is about? So it's awesome. that is my new favorite video game ever. Seeing all these yeah, yeah, you know, seeing all these cute uh, creatures hang on, manufacturing. Hang on, Con, I'm gonna M60. link it. No, 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 here. Yeah, I, I got it. I have it up right now. Holy shit! Power <laughs> world. Power yeah, world. Look at. Some I like how everyone's hyped for all the games that are not Pokemon. Like, you gotta make your Pokemon work like, in fact. It's almost just like Game scroll. Freak is- Don't worry, labor laws won't be applied to pals. Here, fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> like, <laughs> fuck look at this shit! Look at this, this shit! Dude, it's sniping the Pokemon! You're flying the Pokemon, they're they're doing labor! They're manufacturing- What are they They're doing manufacturing guns! Pokemon with guns! I mean, Geodude's canonically look, worked in factories. I mean, the electrons, You have a, you have a Pokemon Geodudes. that works as a fucking riot shield! <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh my god! god. This is like Pokemon taken into its most, like, extreme dark look, without dude, actually, has, like, having the It has multiplayer! You can- you can look, trade yo, the battle your Pokemon! Just stream it! Dude, with, this is day one purchase on fucking site! On site! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! This is my new favorite video game and it's not even Please. out yet. <laughs> what Here's another one. Marching and crime. Endangered species pals live in the hunting prohibited areas. If Why are you, you reading the thing? Them, you'll get tons of money. Uh, it's only illegal. Also, I made the thing a live general. I posted it's it. It's only illegal if you get caught! The, I, does this actually say that? He well, is gonna have a criminal day with this Dude, game. I know really? for a fucking fact that there's almost definitely a developer, literally in this game, who's like, "Hey, hey, I got, I got the Pokemon patch ready to go whenever, so you can have Pokemon." <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the, yeah, uh, they yeah, do that. Make I like the description of uh, the world is full of dangerous uh, dangers, such as food shortages, harsh weather, and illegal Fucking poachers. You must story. be prepared to do anything, even if you want to survive, even if you need to. Consume Consume pals sometimes. Fucking uh, look at this wait. shit. She's aiming her M16 at the fucking these guys. Are the, these are the same guys who did fucking Craftopia. That makes too much sense. <laughs> wait, did they? Did, they didn't finish Craftopia. Though? No, they're still working on it. It's just an early access. Then why are they? They just fucking working? announced Pokemon with they guns. <laughs> I actually I don't know what the crap it is. I'm I at think it we now. can all agree that PETA is gonna try to demolish this thing into the fucking oh, ground. I, think and I, would to be I feel like Nintendo real. would go after it more because, like, the, those Pokemon. I can do shit. Look right, fucking. All right, all right, uh, here. 
For the record, Joshy, cut right here in the recording so we're not we're not talking about fucking pals or whatever the fuck it's no, called. No, we are. I'm going to keep it in. <laughs> yeah, let's keep it in. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, okay, so I just looked up... No, actually, I'll yeah. make it the beginning of the session. All right, oh, I just looked up... You know what? I insist then you need it. You need to include somewhere a fucking PNG of a Pokemon holding an AK-47 or some kind of gun. Yes! While we're talking about it. I don't know. <laughs> right. you know it has to be uh, one of those weeb AK skins from Call of Duty Cold War. That's all that. No, it has uh, to be a normal gun. It's so I just looked up Craptopia. Yeah, yeah, uh, give Pikachu an AK-47. We've just I solved saw, gaming problems. A guy just fucking hit a cow with a bat. Just a straight up cow. All right, hey, Rudolph. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get back. That keen sense, sure. I was joking about the dead. Pikachu with the gun. <laughs> I was just joking. <laughs> It's incredible! And now we will Thanks move so forward. Much. And now we will we move forward. We have to move on. on. It's incredible. <laughs> However, unlike Dad, there have been cases where the timing of your predictions have been mis mistaken. Haven't there? I was only joking about giving Pikachu a gun! <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna ask me to Google something, I'm gonna Google it. <laughs> Oh, for fuck's sake. Big Diddy Vampire Goth Girl. What? Mm. Right now we're talking Lady D Not in a right second. now. We don't Let's do talk about a red-headed milk right now. Like, Be son, believe it's a panel the fiddly fish the knock boom go. Okay, okay, I got it. <clears throat> Nissan, believing that Japan will definitely face an economic boom. You have been launching resort projects everywhere and almost all of them continue to fail. <laughs> Well, I'm sure that era you predicted is arriving. It seems that you misread the timing of that boom. You were too early. And then you hurriedly tried to sell everything off, and as a result, opened the wound even further. If your nose was really so reliable as you predicted the coming of a boom, then there should be no reason for you to sell off your property. Isn't this proof that you don't trust your own ability? How rude. Are you trying to insult my husband? No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Nazi's forehead creased as she rose from the sofa. Ava, paying this no heed, stared across with a confident smile. Kraus, who also maintained his confident appearance, told Nazi to sit down. Sit down. Please stop, Natsuhi. My little sister is incapable of speaking any other way, and always has been. Calm yourself a little. Your headache will get worse. Proof that you have no talent is also right here. After all, Nissan, weren't you all excited about turning this island into a resort? Building a wonderful resort hotel, beautifully maintaining the garden. I'm just an amateur and don't pretend to understand, but you must have used a significant amount of money, right? What are you trying to say? My husband's business has nothing to do with you. Actually, that's not true, Natsuhi-san. Rokenjima's not Anakis. It's Dad's. The hotel that was constructed is Anakis, of course. If you like, you can charge us lodging fees tonight. Right, Rosa? Well... <clears throat> if what I have on hand will suffice... If I can make it into a resort, the island's financial worth will rise. It is true that expenses are piled up, but we can hope to have a large harvest in the future. When that happens, it should prove to be beneficial to all of you as well. I understand that. 
If the value of this island rises, that will increase our shares when we distribute the inheritance. Of course, we won't ask you to physically divide the island and the mansion into four equal parts. We're quite happy to settle this with whatever you calculate its financial worth to be. If you understand that much, what about my business makes you so dissatisfied? That you're running it. We aren't dissatisfied, we're uneasy. In the first place, Anarchy, when do you plan to open that hotel? Keep this up and every square inch of it will be covered in our grubby handprints. That's right. It's an important tool for your business, isn't it? I understand that you can't keep it locked up the moment you open it for business. Buildings go bad if you don't use them and air them out every once in a while. Even so, it's a bit extravagant for a guest house that we only use once a year. Wouldn't you say, Rosa? <coughs> yeah, that's right. If it's that wonderful, I'm sure it will become quite popular once you open it. Oh, the hotel you mentioned earlier was referring to the guest house, I see. Hell of a building, isn't it? Just as Rosa said, I'm sure it would become popular if he were to open it. The lodge may have been guided to and not been constructed with the intent of building a guest house. It was originally constructed as a resort hotel. However, even though it had been completed two years ago, there was absolutely no schedule for it to be opened. Nisa, it's just like all of your enterprises. Your attention and planning are both fabulous. Then, it always becomes unable to maintain itself part way, and ends without being able to collect any profit. Much like your marriage. It was brilliant of you to spot that it was a waste to use this island only as a place to live. I think that turning it into a resort which could use things like marine sports, fishing, or honeymoons to attract customers was a pretty good plan. If I were the oldest son, I'm sure I too would have racked my brains over what kind of profit I could get off of this island. But two whole years have passed since you finished building, right? After two years, you still don't know when you'll be able to open it? Where is the managing company you've entrusted it to? Impertinence. That is not my husband's fault. There has just been some trouble with the company that my husband contracted with. No matter how you look at it, we are the victims here. That's the thing, though. This company that Cross Nissan hired, I haven't heard many good rumors about it, you know? One uh, so she's the wife of him, right? Yes. 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 They're married. Hideyoshi is the male wife to Ava. Well, well they yes. not beat so... around the bush. <laughs> Mansplain, man wife, gaslight, gatekeep, girl boss. <laughs> it yeah, that's weird. That, it seems weird that this guy seems like a good guy, and yet he kind of married a bitch. Mm. Well, How dare you? And that happens, dude. Yeah, yeah, it does. What do you mean? Ava's not a bitch. Look, she she's has a the fan. Lady. How can you say no? <laughs> Dude, she's wearing a strap on her shoulder and she has a literal tattoo of the family crest on her left arm. Yeah. Anyways. Let's not beat around the bush. The project disintegrated midway due to non-payment embezzlement and other troubles. Did you think the rumors wouldn't reach our ears? <laughs> I've been collecting evidence. I don't know what evidence, what kind of evidence you found, but it's all baseless. 
As new members in the sightseeing business, it is necessary to lay the groundwork with various people. It's also important to discuss how trustworthy the other party is. This is nothing more than taking some time to meet that end. I'll accept that in my rashness, the hotel was completed too early. However, we are not paying maintenance costs. It's a slow and vital strategic arrangement. Yeah, but... More like you want to sell it, but can. There's no reason for anyone to buy such an extravagant hotel on an isolated island with nothing on it and no established sightseeing routes. Besides, what's happening with the loans you gathered for this project? It might not be costing you maintenance, but the borrowed money you can't return is just going up and up. Sorry, Cross Nissan. I investigated the development plan for this island a little. I gotta be honest, I've not heard anything good either. Hideyoshi-san, I'm sure that only looking at the current financial condition could lead you to that impression. Mm -hmm. However, that is a prior investment. I have no choice but to admit that my prediction was mistaken and that up until now several liabilities have been created. However, the times have finally caught up with me. I will soon regain everything that I've lost up to this point. No, actually, all of the investments I've made out until now will finally return to my possession. That's right, just like throwing away a small fry, which then becomes a salmon, they will come back even bigger than before. Sure, I'm with you on that. Starting soon, the resort business will probably see an unprecedented boom. Though, who knows whether it'll be enough to bury all the your liabilities. But I gotta ask, Cross Nissan. After all the crushing defeats you've suffered so far, who in the world supplied you with the funds? That's a heck of a sum we're talking. Enough to cover your massive debt, right? What are you trying to say, Hideyoshi-san? Ah, uh, Natsui-san, please don't get mad. We've done our research, see? We looked into it, trying to see who could have loaned Cross Nissan. Who, wait, yeah. Who lo who's lost all his battles thus far, enough to support his recent massive gutsy investments. And the result? No one. There is no backer. The iron rule of the money roulette is to bet against the unfortunate. And Anarchy, you're a well-known unfortunate in this neighborhood. Surely this era seems set to welcome an economic boom, but when we asked who, with respect to Anarchy's failures, would find him worthy of funding, there was no one. So you see. Where did you raise that money from? That's what we started to question next. Oh. Isn't this an interesting story? And? D dear. How long do you plan to ignore these abusive remarks? 
sit down, Natsuhisan. Let me be blunt. Anarchy, you've been diverting Dad's private funds for your own business. There's almost no doubt. If we made some mistake, please feel free to explain it for us. Rudolph, this isn't diverting funds. This is embezzlement, isn't it? It's a genuine crime that can be criminally prosecuted. This rudeness in the extreme. How can you face the successor to the Urushiroma famine family and level these wild accusations? Hey, they aren't wild. They're right on the money, aren't they? He wants to make his business succeed so he can recover his losses, but his debt is actually growing. All he wants is to get himself out of the holy's dog by making an even bigger gamble than before. If he had funds close at hand, it's only logical that he'd try to use them. Let me say it clearly, Nisan. What you are doing is embezzlement. You are betraying our father. I imagine that we will leave you to the mercy of the course after this is all over. Do you think that those people will kindly agree to address you as successor to the Urushimuya family head, huh? Uh, of all the things, saying he's betraying the head is not something I can overlook. You no longer have the right to darken the doors of the glorious Ushiromiya house. Leave this place immediately. Go on. Get out. Natsu, who had already reached her, the limits of her anger, shouted at Ava in a rage. She then pointed alternatively at Ava in the hallway. Alternatingly at Ava in the hallway. Ind indicating that she should leave. Uh, Ava took out a folding fan and fanned herself with it, glaring maliciously at Natsu, as though silently daring her to repeat what she just said. However, her mouth was still smiling, curved into the shape of a crescent moon. In that unpleasant silence, Rosa gulped. Hey, Natsuhine-san, who do you think you are speaking to? I am speaking to the extremely impolite sister of my husband. As the person in charge of family affairs, I cannot overlook any more of this. In charge of family affairs? <laughs> I do that too well. Shut up. You sorry excuse for a wife. Ava folded the fan with a snap and rose powerfully. Compared to the elegance and playful behavior she had shown until just now, she was unimaginably aggressive. How foolish you leave. You would tell me, Ushiro Mia Ava. Me, Ava, the third ranked in the Ushiro Mia family hierarchy, who was granted the left shoulder of the head to leave. Learn your place. And then look in the mirror at your shabby figure. Where on your clothes is the wing? Where are you permitted to wear the one-winged eagle? Your only purpose was to birth a successor to the Yoshiromiya family. Know your place, bitch. While well, Ava's face grimaced unattractively, the words pierced Nazi's heart like claws, and painfully twisted in. <sighs> there were a hundred ways Nazi wanted to respond. However, her anger and sorrow crushed her throat, and not one of them managed to make it to her mouth. The anger which, the anger which had lost any place to go became a single hot tear which slowly dripped down. What? If you have something to say, please say it now. Come on. 
Ava faced her with a provocative gaze. However, Natsuhi's fist was shaking. She trembled all over, not unable to do anything. Kraus quietly broke the powder keg tension. Natsuhi? Leave your seat. You should cool off your head. <laughs> Natsuhi, presenting the fact that her husband had not come to her aid, shifted to the focus of her attack. Don't you understand what they're saying about you? These people are basically calling you a traitor to the father. We protect the glory of the Yoshiromiya family. We put forth effort day in, day out, striving to be paragons of nobility in order to take over that glory from father. Then this inexcusable rambling tramples it all underfoot. And you, why don't you talk back to them? I'm talking back because you won't, but you have just been relying completely on me. And now you are telling me to go cool my head? It's always me! I am always thinking so seriously about this family's affairs, and you've just taken that and- <laughs> Natsuhi could no longer hide her tears. She flew from the room in that state. After that, all that remained was a somewhat embarrassed mood about the parlor. When sound of footsteps grew distant and silence returned, Kraus shrugged his shoulders slightly. I apologize to my wife. She's always been bad at controlling her emotions. I too have a hard time with her. Bruh. <laughs> Fucking hell, Kraus. If you've got someone like that running things, you must be on the edge constantly as well. <laughs> Kelly, you're needed. Kelly. Mike's muted, by the way. I see it. But, um... It's nothing. Leave me be. Natsuhi flew to her room and bent over the bed, wailing. Those heart-wrenching sobs reached Kumasawa in the hallway. Oh, heart-wrenching. But I'm Natsuhi. There's a deep enmity between her and Eva-sama. Explaining their relationship is very draining for a woman such as myself. No oh, fuck. It looks like I'm going to do it anyway. You sure are me, your family holds its bloodline in high regard. If a daughter marries into another family, they would normally be removed from the family hierarchy. So, under normal circumstances, Iva-sama should have been removed when she met Hideyoshi-sama. However, this was nobody's fault. And I'm definitely born no guilt. There's no way to say it other than calling him a win a, a whim of God. Osama and Natsuhi-sama were not blessed with children for some time. But of course, this was the patriarchal Yushiromiya family. The wife was just a tool to create an heir. It's a baby factory. That wife could not fulfill her only duty. She would not be treated as human. It is painfully to remember how much the master tortured Badam during that time. During that time, Eva Sama and Hideyoshi Sama's wedding was discussed. Eva Sama was sly. Taking advantage of Madame's inability to become pregnant, she gained the favor of the master. Inspired him to allow her to marry and give birth to a successor herself, making sure to avoid transferring her name out of the Ushiramiya register. 
was a vast difference in the Ushiromiya hierarchy between Madame, who married into the Ushiromiya family, who was treated like an outsider, and Iwasama, who was related to the family by blood, and whose husband took on the Ushiromiya name. Now I know what it's like when someone posts tits while you're reading. Beyond that, Iwasama was the first to give birth, and much more, to a boy. Perhaps you can now understand how much weaker Madam's position was compared to Iwasama's. I'm sure Madame was tormented by the thought that if only she had gotten pregnant earlier, Master would have accepted Iwasama's request to keep her last name after marriage. Eva Sama would not have been permitted to act as arrogantly as she had today. However, that was not Madame's fault. All the blame lies with God's whims. Stork would deliver Jessica Sama. <laughs> Even so, Madame won't allow herself to see things this way probably can't help but cry bitter tears at her inability to carry out the duties expected of a wife. Ah, how heartrending. And to be a baby factory. Okay, okay, okay I'm done. So. Can't do anything but watch over her from the shadows. And that's it for the night. <laughs> Hallelujah! Damn, no cannon. This lady is literally saying it's terrible that she can't be a baby factory. So, by the way, that clock turned backwards. Mm. Yeah, because we're going back. Well, because a now we're talking about Battler and the rest of them. Yeah. All right, fuck. That's then. it for the night. So, uh, I'm probably going to. Oh, B's gone. I guess we're not doing that test today. What? Huh? What? Oh. Test? No, oh, no, okay. that's for we, when. That's for finish. after it's done. Oh. Okay. What? By I, the way, y'all motherfuckers, that scene was important. I hope you were listening. Uh, I'll, I'll be real. I'll be very real. Oh, holy very... shit. I was oh. talking about my monologue that was important. Yeah, this Cut is what I was street. talking Cut about. The, Get the, the, the fucking, this shit's exploded in the fucking Umi project. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be real. <laughs> I, large I was zoning <laughs> out. I was zoning out a lot. It was very important. I mean, it I was. I yeah. no. I mean, yeah, well, we, we, I know the again. whole embezzlement shit. I might need to rewatch this a bit because I, I was, my focus was gone. I mean, I get it. It's kind of boring, but it's also pretty. It's important. not that. It's that I am. I have. Uh, I have uh, it's I better have than the fucking angel mort shit back in Higurashi. It has to work. But this has an important. This sets up shit. Yeah. Like, like, I just- th Literally, the siblings are at each other's throats because of fucking financial oh, issues. I'm but, uh, yeah, like, like I- I'm like, weird, other weird shit. Like, stuff is happening. I- I- I'm just really bad. Like, my attention span is just terrible. So it's like- It's not that I was boring. I was actually quite interested, but it takes me cough, cough, Mr. Roboot, can we hmm. skip this scene and go to Battler and the people on the beach? It takes more than being interesting to keep my attention. Like, I need to be gripped. Yes, How grip with the so horny. Uh, no, I'll, just like Joshi, I'll, I'll fully admit this part of it. This part isn't quite that gripping because yeah. Like, look, like, okay, Joshi, 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 Joshi. Yes, but you have the hindsight because now because you've already read it, you know why this is super important. <laughs> But well, even get... when I read it the first time, I was actually interested. The stakes are not up. established. I I I, uh, I do feel like there. I like, I was thinking, yeah, this is probably important, but just my focus is bad. Yeah, it's like, I, anything, I, like, I feel like the beach scene is relatively like, kind of I nothing. Understand. I mean, even the beach scene is pretty important, yeah. all things considered. I'll admit, I've got notes over all of this, and a lot of what I'm figuring out right now is pretty interesting. And yeah. I've got some stark questions yeah. for you guys. Uh, um, oh? Well, we, oh. we will answer them to the best of our abilities. Yes. Ah, I guess go right this, ahead. This is, the, this is the con question segment, I guess. Sure, well, let's hit it. All right, then. First question I have to go ahead and ask for. If most of the descendants of Kinzo, his kids. If he went ahead and had a normal relationship with any other woman, he, they would have all had black hair at that point, right? 
I'm gonna tell. Okay. Uh, yeah, but this Con, is an anime. Con, Con, I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, the hair color has literally nothing to do with the mystery as a whole, and I will tell you that with certainty. <laughs> I, I also, will say that he's, we he's have only one woman, Crimson, and you know who it is. Crimson, please let the people who have finished Dumaneko answer. <laughs> but yeah, don't worry about the hair color thing. I wonder every day why Rudolph's hair isn't red like Battler's. <laughs> so, um, yeah, to, to answer uh, that, uh, in, even in the spoiler chats, we have had long conversations of what the fuck is up with Ava, Krause's, and Rudolph's fucking hair because they're not matching. Also, Rosa. I keep forgetting Rosa. <laughs> like, they're uh, easy to forget Rosa. Everyone's, <laughs> hair, everyone's, hair, everyone's hair is just for recognizability. Well, minus is Jessica, yeah. who actually dyed her hair blonde. Alright, let's see uh, question number two. Well, aside from Kinzo being a butt clown. He's a tier 3 sub to Beatrice. Wait, like, is your question, why is Kinzo a butt clown? No. Something about his backstory just doesn't add up correctly about the island. Uh, I, mean, I don't know why, but I just have this feeling that's not something real. Like, something else happened on the island. Oh, probably. Hmm? That's will, why it's a mystery, yeah. You either confirm or deny anything that might have happened on the island in the past. Hmm. Anyway, I have to go because I have to work tomorrow. But right. it's oh, gonna sure. be sorry. All right. Okay, yeah. Get your rest, Shelly. Uh, I also uh, did some research about what a rondo is. I remembered hearing the word before from general music study. Hmm? It's like fleurlis. Yeah. A B A C A. Often called an episode. Uh, so to get, uh, Con, I'll actually I'll explain that a little bit. Uh, Rikishi loves using music terminology for this stuff. Like uh, in the in the fi- terminology, huh? like in the in the fighting game, uh, they literally go the first movement, the second movement. So by that logic, we'd be in the prelude. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Also, it works because you know this game is a fucking banger ass soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Like, there's a lot of I'm glad I woke like, up for these of, um, questions. <laughs> Like even in like the the marketing of the of the thing, it's the, there's a lot of importance put on the music because it's literally called a sound novel. It's not just a visual novel. Yeah. yeah. Almost like if the music was actually composed by people and not just a bunch of stock music Murikushi grabbed off like stock music websites and slightly pitch shifted. Are you sure? I, I, think it feels like I thought that was a thing with some record. of the original soundtrack, was that it's it, like pitch-shifted yeah, royalty-free stuff. Yep. Would it be too much <laughs> of a stretch to say that they're trying to set up Kraus as a possible murderer? Maybe. I mean, like, if you look at it, all the parents have perfect, perfect like, you know, motives for killing. Like, oh, yeah. I think it's yeah, establishing like, fucking, motive. It's, it's money. I also like, mean as a currently. Kraus is the one being given most motive as of right now. Failing business, possible embezzlement of his family funds... And his wife is just officially unaware of all of this. He has a motive and a good set time right now. The problem is I don't think he's going to do anything involving it. He's a coward. Eh, maybe. Hmm, maybe. We can either confirm or deny, deny anything, don't worry. Okay, good, you are recording this because this is actually really good. Yeah, no, like this, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. Like I said, I've been taking notes. That's good. Uh, That's I will, good. I will say to, uh, to, to uh, I guess, expand on the motive stuff a little bit more, in the following scenes involving the parents, they will go a little bit more into quote-unquote motive for some of the characters. There's a lot more setup. Oh, no. There's a lot more setup in the wings, don't worry. We'll, we will be cutting back to the family talking angrily about things. Mm-hmm. Don't you when your parents no, argue all the time? No, that's a more interesting <laughs> prospect here. Their dynamics says a lot about how Kinzo treated them as children as well. Obviously, the abuse and all the constant crazy negativity must really have altered their minds and their heads. Eh, possibly. So, well, so for would starters, you say that Kinzo is possibly a really shitty parent? Yes, I'm saying Kinzo is a terrible shitty parent. That one's pretty obvious from day one. Hmm. Awesome. And one thing I did point out was the story was like, uh, Kinzo's like, oh, Bachelor is a fool who can't inherit the, who disowned the Shiromiya name. And they literally just explained, 
Hey, Kinto was able to be as successful as he was because he disowned the Ashiramiya name and got away from there. Pretty yeah, much and then, season and then reclaimed it afterwards when they all died. Uh, yeah, season mode. Can I point a small detail that I only recently noticed about Kinzo in between Battler and Kinzo? Mm-hmm. You what up? Their suits are uh, similar colors. Like orange's like coat outline is like obviously more like what was it uh, uh tannish? Just orange. orange. Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I am Battler. Bring <laughs> 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 Battler's <laughs> suit. Uh, suit coat and like pants are obviously like more tannish, but like uh, uh what is it? <laughs> It's very clearly uh, similar, like in what it's like it there, is. I guess. Yeah, like like clearly, uh, the, even like the undershirt, like is like the same red. Oh yeah. Here, is there a, here? I can get. I can pull up like, the full body of the the PS3 artwork. There was also something else that caught my attention. If anybody else is willing to go ahead and listen. Sure. Yeah. Remember uh, back in Higurashi when Rika was going on and on about miracles. And the mm-hmm. magic of them. Uh, hang on a sec, my dog wants uppies. Also, I po- I posted the fucking full art of Kinzo, and I don't know. I have my first instinct when I saw the the one winged eagle on his pant leg. I was like, why is he pissing down his leg? <laughs> <laughs> his legs are mm-hmm. kind of weird, but I think that's the same. For, yes, like for three. an entire mm-hmm. for an entire few lines. He was, he was completely going on and on about how making and believing in a miracle can happen to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That stupid mic! God damn it! Hold on! Fuck! Ugh! I'm trying to sound smart. Ugh. Fuck! <sighs> okay. Find where. Right here. Uh, to, to answer, to answer the, uh, to answer the the uh, the Higurashi stuff. Um, Sorry, I some... wanted to go ahead and say. Oh, go ahead. He was talking about coins to gamble, mm-hmm. and that he was going to go ahead and throw the rest of them off to the devil's to the demon's gambit, mm-hmm. or to Rika, and that just makes me think. There could be a slight possibility that Rika, in any world fragmenting, could be involved in this. Is that a possibility? Um, we can neither confirm nor deny. We will neither confirm nor deny the existence of magic. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, we never like we never appearing in this story. He has fucking grimoires. I think it's safe to say that there's some kind of creep magic mm. involved along with there being a witch. I will uh, say though, uh, for all intents and purposes, this is this this entire uh, show was kind of built as sort of an answer to Higurashi in a certain way. So it's natural that he would make callbacks to it. Uh, I, something I do wonder is, we never really found out who that Frederica Burncastle person was. I mean, isn't it, like, just implied that it was, uh... It's just implied that it's it's time-traveling oh older Rika. Wait, wait, Robert, what, what, boot, what are you gonna say? What? What are you gonna say, Robert? What are you gonna say? What are you gonna say? I'll say it after the stream. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh... Good thing to leave it off on, but alright. Anyway, so yeah, it's like, uh, what were you saying about Burn Castle? What? Uh, what? Uh, well, like, uh, to answer, uh, we didn't really get much information from Burn Castle from fucking, uh, what was it? Or Frederica Burn Castle from that, fucking, that was just uh, sort of like, Higurashi. Uh, but, like, lot, I think a lot of, like, what Frederica Burn Castle was, at least based on, like, that little last thing by the end, is like, hey, you can make your own Higurashi fragment. Follow your dreams, and that's just him and fucking Rikishi doing a, a crossing his arms and smiling like a like a smug bastard. So like, yeah, I I think it's just like implied that uh, what was it, Frederica Burncastle is a like Rika in Higurashi, because mm-hmm. like at the end, like clearly the 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 person giving like the end of monologue is like, uh, what was it the like uh, I get to do. I oh I'll fucking Zaz here. I keep fucking forgetting. <laughs> Sorry, Zaz. Um, shit, I forgot too. Yeah, it's okay. He's been pretty much spoiled on a lot of shit. <laughs> mm. Um, but like, what was it? They, they the the, it, the I think they make it like, especially at the end when it's like, you, I, I think it's very clearly, uh, during that one moment with uh that past event. Well, I'll try to keep vague because uh Zaz, um, mm. is like. That's hinted. That's supposed to be like 
burn castle and they they look a suspicious amount like a uh, rika also i remember hearing that in the past that uh, uh burn castle if i look her up it's gonna be spoilers i don't know if that's for higurashi or imaneko and i'm not gonna ask i'm just I gonna not look it up but guys i, I just kinda, i just realized this, it's gonna fuck your mind uh, uh, what are you gonna say Run it, run it by us first. No, run us by DM us. Also, DM us. DM the people who know first. Also, I find yes, it interesting Nectar? that I find it interesting that Kenzo literally said if he believed hard enough and he tried and put all his luck into it, even he could create a miracle. I don't know if that's just. Yeah, God, I forget his name. I don't know if that's Ryukishi just being a smartass and making a callback, or if it's actually some sort of indication of magic being real here. I mean, like, if you you see, what was it, at the very beginning, uh, Kinzo and, like, Nanjo are, like, playing chess, and, like, at, towards, like, the end of uh, Higurashi, they use, like, chess pieces, uh, like, terminology. Ryukishi loves his chess analogies. Yeah. So, like... Yeah, but in chess, it's not about luck. It's about strategy. Hmm. hmm. Well, you got anything else? No, I think that's everything. Alrighty then, so we will wrap it up for today. Hey, uh, to anybody who's not literally just us in <laughs> in the fucking <laughs> in the stream chat, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, hopefully we'll have uh, more people next time. That'd be cool. Um, until uh -huh. then, uh, thank you for coming with us. Uh, have a good night. See you later. <laughs>